Steeped in American history, sight of Fiesta this week, the seasonal colors red and green are for the Huskers and Spartans. For Michigan State, 2003, a season with a new coach, a new offense, and renewed hope. The program pride is back. The turnaround personified by a quarterback who took the term comeback off the field. Tonight, he tries to end his career, overcoming one more obstacle. Nebraska's season of angst has had its ups and downs. The present, one last stand for a top-running quarterback, combined with a defense that returned its good name, second in the nation in causing turnovers. Tonight, their goal, end a painful season with a 10th win. We welcome you live inside the Alamo Dome in San Antonio for the 11th MasterCard Alamo Bowl. Ninth year of the Big Ten against the Big 12. From East Lansing, the Spartans of Michigan State. From Lincoln, the Huskers of Nebraska. Crowd of over 50,000 on hand tonight, and good evening. We welcome you to the only game of football on this Monday night. 87 teams won less than nine games this year. So nine wins is pretty good, except if you're Nebraska. Nine wins plus an uncertain direction for where the program was going, led, as you probably know, to the firing of longtime Husker Frank Solich 30 days ago. Since then, no public word on where this program's going to go for the next step. So tonight, Nebraska takes the field with as much uncertainty as it has in the last four decades. Bo Pelini comes in as the head coach. First-year defensive coordinator, did a bang-up job in Lincoln, nine years in NFL assistant, never been a head coach anywhere until tonight. Lee Corso and Kirk Herbstreit, join me, guys. It's not Bo Pelini's defense that's been the problem, but a one-dimensional offense for the Huskers this year. Well, you year. know, Mike, uh, Nebraska is at best offensively when they're able to establish the power running game in the option. The best offensive player they got by far is number five, Jamal Lord. Now, Lord is the leading rusher for Nebraska the last two years. He set the Nebraska single-season total offensive record this year with 2,774 yards. But I think the key tonight is not his legs, but his arms. I I think he's going to have to throw the ball. And I wouldn't be surprised. Play action over the top. Remember, he threw for 146 yards against Colorado last game in a big win. He can throw. Yeah, Nebraska is the team in flux. That's usually the hat that the Spartans wear. <laughs> but they come in really going great. John L. Smith, new coach, Big Ten coach of the year, went from four wins to eight. And Jeff Smoker, their quarterback, this time last year, didn't know if he'd play football again because of a substance abuse problem. He was suspended, but he's come back second team all conference this year, Kirk. Well, I think it's a great story, and he has to be considered the, the player of the year as far as the comeback player of the year because of everything that he has been through. He's the beneficiary of a new system at Michigan State. They like to throw the football a lot more than they did in his first three years as a starting quarterback. And the thing that you have to love about Jeff Smoker is his accuracy and anticipation. And against the Nebraska defense that led the nation this year in interceptions, accuracy will be very important for him tonight. But, Doc, I tell you, you look at all these challenges that he's faced on the field in this past year. Probably his biggest challenge has been off the field. Kirk, you're exactly right. You know, 13 months ago when Jeff Smoker entered an inpatient treatment center in the state of Michigan, the recovery process officially began. Now, when he emerged, head coach John L. Smith mandated strict accountability, accountability that included 5 a.m. workouts, frequent late night and weekend phone calls from assistant coaches, and, of course, his spring break was spent serving at a soup kitchen in East Lansing. Tonight, thousands of Michigan State fans will pull for him to win a football game, but hopefully millions of fans who have heard his story will pull for him to win his life back in what by the nature of an illness will be an ongoing battle for many many years to come michael doc first meeting of these teams in seven years but some nasty words and nearly fists were traded in san antonio this week it's going to be intense when it starts and it starts in 60 seconds America's ninth largest city for the 11th annual MasterCard Alamo Bowl from San Antonio's Alamo Dome. Michigan State 8 and 4, Nebraska 9 and 3. The Huskers have won the toss, defer the option to the second half, so the Spartans will receive the opening kick. Nebraska, the home team in the red and white, the Spartans in white and green. We're ready for football on Monday night, and off we go with the 2003 MasterCard Alamo Bowl. Andre Cobb took back three kicks for touchdown, but he'll take an E on that deep kickoff. Thus, the Spartans come out with Jeff Smoker. As Jerry told you, very difficult offseason. Smoker has battled back and on the field. He has become second team all conference. Jeff Smoker is the first Michigan State quarterback to reach the 3,000 passing milestone. Last game he had against Penn State, he threw for a record time four touchdowns. This kid is ready to play, Kirk. 
He'll lead a uh, wide open spread offense very similar to what John L. Smith ran at Louisville where he was very successful making five consecutive goal runs. Opening drive start from the Spartan 20. And Smucker pressured right away and is set. A loss of eight. Trevor Johnson, the senior defensive end, got there. And Smoker put down on the opening snap. Well, this is the most important thing tonight for Nebraska's defense. They have to be able to get pressure with four. Teams that have attacked, which is what Nebraska typically does by bringing pressure, have gotten into trouble because of the quick release of Jeff Smoker. Bo Pelini feels that if they can get pressure with just their front four, this could be a great night for Nebraska's defense. The right tackle, Steve Stewart, just runs too far and let Johnson to the inside. That's why he got the sack. Loss of eight. Jaron Hayes is the lone back for second at 18. And here he comes. The sophomore to Denver. Pushes forward and gets close to the original line of the 20-yard line. Hayes has been one of three different starters and running back by committee. We'll see DeAndre Cobb tonight also. Eric not a tight end who has performed to the level many hope. Brown, Shabai, and Alexander have come on as sophomore receivers. Offensive line, Ron Steven Wheeler may have started tonight. He did not, but Sean Poole gets the start. Tate's a veteran. Harker, a sixth-year performer. And Steve Stewart, Stewart making his 36th and final start in the green and white of the spot. Third and a dozen, you'll see a red line for the line of scrimmage on third and fourth down all night. Pressure coming up the middle. Sloker eludes it for a moment, but a second sack on this drive for Johnson. He had two sacks all season. He has two sacks in three plays. Interesting the way they're moving people around here with some of the players because of the style of Michigan State offense. Trevor Johnson's a defensive end, lines up as a linebacker, and comes right through the middle. They're rushing three. Hollowell, the linebacker on the outside. Look at the speed, the amount of athletic ability that they have in a third and long situation on an obvious passing down. What they got as a Mitch match. Jared David Hayes cannot block a big guy like Johnson. That's why he got the set. A lot of speed there. Strong-legged freshman Brandon Fields. A beautiful punt. Sends Josh Davis all the way back to the 29. Davis has some blocks and some room. A nice field position for Nebraska to start at the 42. Special teams tackle with a penalty marker down. Made by Andrew Peterson, the snapper. A uh, Michigan State player is hurt as well. And that's Drew Stanton, their backup quarterback. Stanton's the number two guy who might very well replace Jeff Smoker next year as the starting quarterback. He was put in on special teams at the start of the season by John L. Smith and made the first three tackles in punt coverage this year. But obviously they're working on his leg. and You never want to lose anybody, but could lose your backup quarterback who's been the personal protector on punts all year. And going into spring ball as he tries to win the starting job. It's going to be a big block here coming. Watch five right there. Here comes the big block by Cooper. Questionable to say the least. In the back. Yeah. Let's hope that he's able to come back and get off the field and be okay. Yeah, Stanton out of Farmington Hills, Michigan and Harrison High School. Only threw three passes this year. And so the Spartans could potentially lose their starting or starting personal protector for punt situations and their backup quarterback after the play on special teams hit by Cooper. Nebraska takes over with good field position at its own 42 for Jamal Lord, who will look to throw, put it up top for the tight end, Matt Harrion, who could not reel it in. Jason Harmon back on the coverage as Nebraska goes deep on the first play. Well, those of you listening to us right now, uh, we have lost our video signal, so we'll uh, get it back here. Apologize for losing the picture for a moment. Deep pass from Lord, incomplete. Lord, a senior quarterback, 27th and final start for the senior from New Jersey. Well, Jamal Lord, known for his running ability, it's a running offense, but Michigan State is going to come in with a defense that's going to pack it in. Nebraska and Jamal Lord have to have the ability to hit the play action pass. Second down, Corey Ross, the five foot six high back, jukes forward to get out to the 46 yard line. The pickup of about four. Let's meet the rest of the Huskers playing offense. Ross, Judd Davies, not as powerful and potent as other Nebraska fullbacks. You saw Harry and Steep ability. Receivers only caught 
of 50 balls in this team all year. Not a passing team. Offensive line, Richie Incognito, first team all Big 12 with Mike Erickson, Josh Sewell at center, Jake Anderson, and Dan Philly Waldrop up front. I want you to watch 51 Incognito. If you choose not to watch the ball for a few plays, he's good, and he's in a big head-to-head -head battle tonight. He's the left tackle. Third and six, Lord throwing. Incomplete, contact, but no flag. Right now the flag comes in late. The field judge threw it as Roderick Maples hit Isaiah Flewellen on the slant. Officials from the WAC, the Western Athletic Conference, Rich Colin leads the crew. And the Cornhuskers have thrown two of the first three snaps against John L. Smith's team. John L. lighten up the officials. He's not real happy, but I don't think he has much of an argument there. I think Maples jumped the ball. He had a nice job breaking on the football, but he made contact. The bottom of your screen, he reads slant all the way. He's reading the quarterback's oh. eyes, and he clearly bumped into the receiver flown before he had a chance to make the catch. That's a good call by the officials. John L. Smith and coaches like this like to work the officials Early. just in case the next time. <laughs> Here is Ross up the middle with the lead back. Blocking for him gets across the 40 into the 39-yard line a pickup of five. Here's the Michigan State defense much improved this year But still has some holes Taplin at 10 sacks Matthias Askew, Rasmussen and Cliff Dukes good-looking junior on the end with a spark big linebackers 250 pounds 234 and Mike Lavinjo lost 15 to get down to 252 Secondary they've given up some pass plays Barnett and Maples on the corner Jason Harmon and Greg Cooper are big in this game a lot of runs, a lot of safeties coming up. Pitch to Ross, got the corner, and close to the first down, depending on the mark where he went out of bounds. He's going to be a yard shy. We'll have third and one coming up. Mike Labinjo from Toronto pushed him out of bounds. Finally get a feel of the option there. It took four plays, but uh, when they run it, it's a thing of beauty. And I know this, this season for the offense hasn't been a, a stellar year in comparison to some of the great years in Nebraska history, but still, when it comes to execution of option football, Nebraska's as good as you're going to find. Their offensive coordinator, Barry, Barney Cotton, was born and raised to use the option as an offensive lineman for Nebraska. Cross up the middle, first down, and he stumbled, although he may have been on his way. Boy, how about the fullback, <laughs> Judd Davies, out of Omaha, cleared the path to move the chain. Now this is just a big guys up front getting a chance to third and short just push some people around and have an opportunity to open things up and you got to love the the backs right now Corey Ross is a guy who's emerged throughout this season late in the year and just this is just a simple isolation leading the way with the fullback and a big offensive line very lucky for Michigan State he did not keep his balance because that was a touchdown Steve Crewald now comes in as the fullback option to Ross got the corner and picks up eight yards. Corey Ross emerged as the running back over the last three games. We've had three different starters at the I back spot for Nebraska this year. Josh Davis, David Horn, and then the sophomore Ross came in at 5'6", 200 pounds. He doesn't look like a Nebraska I back. Yeah, but that was a little different option also. It was called a counter option. You fake the ball one way and come back the other way. Not the true option. They've got every kind of option ever invented in football. Yep. Second down, Ross again galloping through the hole. They'll keep the chains moving with a first down at the 16-yard line. Kirk, in the last three games, Ross ran for 108 yards, 87 and 103. Well, against Kansas, Kansas State, and Colorado, he averaged close to 100 yards a game. And talking to the coaches, they said, you know, he finally got healthy, and he finally had an opportunity to show what he can do. It's low center of gravity, 5'6", 200 pounds, and he has unbelievable balance and toughness when it comes to trying to pull this guy down. When he catches that option pitch, he gets upfield probably quicker than any of the other eye backs on the roster. Ross has carried the last six times, makes it in with a Judd Davies carry in the fullback. Gets only a yard or two. Matthias Askew comes up with the tackle. Player lost his headgear there for the Spartans up front. This is early in the game. You're looking at it. It's first drive for Nebraska. But after such a long layoff for both teams, it's really, really demoralizing for this Michigan State defense if they don't come up with a stop. If, if Nebraska can take the football and just drive methodically and move the ball down the field and come away with a touchdown on this series, you got to wonder what that will do to Michigan State just in the early going in this football game to the character. Two receivers to the top of the screen for second and nine. Lord changing the 
came to play. The senior out of New Jersey. Option pitch to Ross. The 10. And steps out of bounds, so just shy of the 10, actually, at the 11 yard line. Well, the third and about four coming up here on this good Nebraska drive that will have play 10-4 coming up. That's the fourth different kind of option play they run. This is what they call the lead option, which is come straight down the line, pitch it off the wide man, and there goes Ross. He's run a counter action, he's run a fullback option, and now he runs that kind of option. They're extremely well coached in the option. They ought to be. That's the spot they run. They play 900 <laughs> right. times a year. The thing I love oh. is when Ross catches the football, oh, yeah. he gets upfield in a hurry. And you see, it's keeping them in an opportunity, third and four, third and two, that's where Nebraska has to stay tonight to have a chance to move the football down the field. Out of the shotgun quarterback draw with Lord. He is wrapped up and pulled down. If they look past, boy, did they have an opportunity. Oh. But Kevin Vickerson turned that one away. Fourth down, field goal time. But you have to believe that that obviously was a, a play that was designed for Lord to keep it and run up the field. You got to wish, though, if you're a quarterback, you have the ability to try to make a check there because the safeties didn't respect the tight end going vertical, and Harrion didn't have anybody within five or ten yards of him in the middle of the field. Keep your eye on this situation because Nebraska faked the field goal in the last game they played in and made a first down. Keep your eye. You never know. David Dykes from 29 knocks it through. So a very Nebraska drive, 10 plays, nine of them runs. Two pass attempts, one was a pass interference. Yep. It ends up in a field goal, 3 nothing for Bo Pelini and the Huskers. Jeff Smoker and the Spartans back on the field when you come back to the Alamo City. Putting drive, Nebraska leading 3 nothing here at the 11th MasterCard Alamo Bowl. Nebraska finishing its season with the victory over Colorado, as Lee alluded to. Friday after Thanksgiving in Boulder, 31-22. Michigan State started 7-1, lost to Michigan, Ohio State, and Wisconsin, but beat Penn State 41-10 in the finale. In East Lansing, Sam Cook's kickoff is returnable, just on the edge of the sideline. It's hauled in and brought out to the 23-yard line. Jason Harmon was there on the return. Well, the Nebraska defense, two sacks already for Trevor Johnson, who joins Ryan Bingham, Lakeith Smith, and Bernard Thomas off the edge. If there's a player to watch tonight, seven. Demario Williams, first team all league. Nine sacks, 18 tackles for loss with Rude and Hollowell. Fabian Washington, Pat Ricketts, and Daniel Bullock's good. I'll take a backseat to Josh Bullock's. Led the nation, 10 interceptions. First team All American. Daniel Bullock, by the way, is his twin brother. Twin brothers starting at safety for Big Red. Jeff Smoker, first play. Former quarterback Aaron Alexander, half a yard shy of a first down out at the 31. Jerry Punch. Guys, a word from the uh, Michigan State bench is not good on Drew Stan, the redshirt freshman quarterback who was on special teams. A significant knee sprain of the right knee involving the anterior cruciate ligament probably will require surgery in a couple of weeks. Not good at all for the backup QB. Oh, so bad. I don't know if that's injuries. Dad down there with him. That means Damon Dowdell, who started uh, five games last year when Smoker was suspended, becomes the number two quarterback and raises questions for Michigan State's offseason discussion of replacing Jeff Smoker. They did give him the first down on that play at the 32. So back the center, he hands to Tyrell Dorch. And the junior from New Jersey takes it out to the 36-yard line. Against this Michigan State offense, guys, one thing you're going to see Nebraska do quite a bit tonight is play their nickel package almost on every down, which means Demario Williams goes from being an outside linebacker standing up to going down into a three-point stance as a rush in, which he typically does in their third and long and obvious passing situation. So he'll be playing defensive end opposite of Trevor Johnson the entire evening, and they're going to move in now several de different defensive backs to give him that nickel package. From the 37, Smoker looks for the screen. Dorch has it. They have Dorch. T.J. Hollowell. 
who returns to Texas tonight, makes a play in his home state to set up third and long for the Spartans. The screen play was set up at the beautiful read by T.J. Holloway. You know the thing I like about him is watch the reaction, Kurt. He saw that line move out. What quickness. You know, I think with this, this new defensive scheme that Bo Pelini brought into Lincoln, yeah. I think that the, one of the biggest and most improved players has been Hollowell throughout this year. And he's playing a lot faster this year. And they were able to get he and Demario Williams on the field together, which is clearly something ha they had to do because of the speed that they bring to the table. Great recognition. Of Loss of nine. Third and 14, needing to get to the 42-yard line. And it's the four-man rush. Smoker's throw. Is caught at the 45. First down for the Spartans. Jeremy Scott, whose brother Gary was a great Michigan State receiver from 96 through 99. They brought the blitz up the middle, and what Joe Tate, the left guard, and Chris Morris did was set up a big screen in the middle and allow that time Smoker to have the ball. Kirk, it looks like if Smoker has time, he can throw the ball very accurately. Well, he's, he's incredibly accurate. Oh. And the other thing he does, probably as well as most college quarterbacks, is he anticipates and throws the ball into the window prior to the receiver getting there and lets him run to the football. That was a big throw there on third down by Smoker. Out of the shotgun, Smoker has five passing options. He comes down to Dorch, and the pass is incomplete. You know, Terrell Dor Dorch is just one of the great comeback stories of this football season. Two years ago at Wisconsin, Dorch was a defensive back. He went up and broke his leg. And to say he broke his leg is medically understating. It was just a nasty-looking break. He did four surgeries in 16 days in the hospital in Madison. Played in his leg, sat out last year, back this year, and playing. And one of the great things about the 16 days in the hospital in Madison, Wisconsin players and Coach Barry Alvarez came to spend time with him and help him along in his road to recovery. And he got to go back to Camp Randall and play this year against the Badgers. Second and ten. Under center, Smoker's throw is caught by Kyle Brown. The sophomore out of West Bloomfield, suburb north of Detroit, made the play first down at the 37. Here's Jerry Punch. Guys, the big concern with Dorch, and you mentioned the injury, Michael, two years ago against Wisconsin. It was one of those very, very ugly scenes. You don't really want to show the video because it really is almost sickening to watch his lower leg, a tibia and fibula fracture, both bones in the lower leg on that right side. Now, they did not put a rod in it. Instead, they put it a plate on the outside of the fibula. But that plate, by fixating the fibula, causes him to have recurrent high ankle sprains. He's battling a high ankle sprain right now. Michael? That's why he's been limited this season, Jerry. But when he's felt good, he has run very well. A couple of hundred yard games. And he told me yesterday he feels pretty good coming in here. His carry takes it out for two to the 35 yard line. We talked about the players from Wisconsin being so supportive in Dorch's recovery. Anthony Davis, the great Wisconsin running back, New Jersey kid like Dorch, went in and gave him a haircut. <laughs> That's true uh, love. There. That's that good is stuff. a real good friendship and shows the camaraderie that you can have in college football. One of the good stories on John L. Smith's team here in 2003. Second and eight, Dean Shabai, the sophomore receiver, is the man in motion. And five out there. Here is Shabai trying to shake free. Goes down the sideline. Shabai stepped out of bounds back at the 27 yard line. It'll be a yard shy of the first down after a pickup of about eight. Trevor Johnson there on defense. We talk about the Louisville offense over the years with John L. Smith, and it's it's now in East Lansing. And, and when you're preparing for a John L. Smith offense, you have to be ready for every screen imaginable. They have 14 or 15 different types of screens that they'll try to get the football. That's why it's tough to get to Smoker. He gets rid of the ball so quickly, and they and you can see Nebraska. They've schemed that and worked hard on that because as soon as they see it, they're taking off and running to try to get out there. The key thing about Shabai, he's a very quick runner after he catches the ball at 5'10". I doubt 5'10". <laughs> Third and less than a yard, they go empty, and penalty markers come in as the play clock was down at zero. Well, check the flag. It is delay of game. So on third Ooh. and less than a yard, a delay of game for a quarterback sneak cost this team, and Michigan State has been cost a lot this year. Ten a game. Third poorest in the country. The top two teams 
teams from the Pac-10. Why is that significant? Because the Pac-10 is the most penalized league in the country. Pac-10 games have more flags than any other conference. So this is a team that has made plenty of self-inflicted mistakes this year. Again, uh, something they brought in from Louisville. And Louisville was up there in the yeah. well, last, last couple of years. Yeah. Washington so, State and Oregon State, by the way, are the two most penalized teams per game. Yeah. Smoker on that opening series was sacked twice. This series, five of six, 43 yards. So protection has helped. They'll lead it here on third and a half dozen. And they put it in the belly of Dorch, who is stopped a couple of yards shy of the first down. The defensive reaction by sophomore Titus Adams, along with T.J. Hollowell. From here, it's a 47-yard field goal, and State's kicker has the leg to make that. But the, the one thing you hate to see from an experienced quarterback is a delay a game on third and one, because that, that cost him an opportunity to move the sticks and keep this drive alive, and now it's up to Rayner to try to come away with a big kick to get any points. But costly middle mistake by Jeff Smoker there on that third and short. Strong leg. 9 of 14 from beyond 40 yards this year. From 46, out of the hold of Brandon Fields, the punter, plenty of leg. The junior Rainer ties Paul Ettinger. 22 field goals in a season, a state record. We're all tied at three in San Antonio. A 3-3 game in the first quarter. But I promise you, as the season gets closer to the championship games and the bowl games get a little higher payout, the defenses get better. That's why we've seen all these games. There's a reason these teams were 7-5. and five. Their defenses weren't any good. Look for the great teams. Look for great defenses. These teams have good defenses. I don't think we're going to have a huge scoring game here tonight. Kick off to Josh Davis. We're bringing that back. That's nine yards back. 39th touchback on 75 kickoffs. 3-3 after Smoker led a field goal drive. It's Nebraska ball after this. Right. River walk in San Antonio. Oh. It's so close as you walk by. I've never seen anybody actually fall into the river, but people walk around there all the time. Great meals. Lee, Kirk has put on a show oh, on the on. river walk this week. Yeah, come on. I mean, full out come Mexican on. fiesta Woo! down there for my boy. First outstanding ten for the Huskers out of the gun from their own 20. All tied at three. A reverse in the hands of their fastest man, Isaiah Flewellen, who got a block from Ward and picked up about four yards as the ball came tumbling out. Greg Cooper came across to make the play. Well, a reminder, tomorrow, Capital One Bowl Week continues. Huge day on the networks. College game day presented by Outback at 4 Eastern. Then at 4.30, over in Houston, it's the EV1.net Bowl. Navy and Texas Tech. Pacific Life Holiday Bowl in beautiful San Diego, Washington State against number five, Texas. And on ESPN2, it'll be UCLA in Fresno State in the Silicon Valley Football Classic. Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN and ESPN2. Log on ESPN.com. Great preview of all the bowl games. Second and on. Option for Pete. He carried 205 times this year, but is stopped there by this aroused Michigan State defense. And some uh, words here as the two teams get separated. Well, guys, we talked about it. Bo Pelini taking over, 36 years old, nine years an assistant coach in the NFL. Came in here, did a bang-up job with the Nebraska defense. Returned some pride to this defense. And in a tough spot as he was asked to take over for Frank Solich as the interim head coach. Never a head coach at any level. He just turned 36 back on December 13th. Has handled this along with the rest of the Nebraska coaching staff. A very uncomfortable situation as well as they could. Michigan State trying to get Nebraska to shake in its boots, and the Huskers did. Practice snap, ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty, down is still free. Kirk, uh, we have mentioned a couple of times when we saw Nebraska in September. You know Bo very well. He was a defensive player on the Ohio State teams that you were a part of. What kind of guy is Bo? Well, if, if you are familiar with uh, Bob Stoops and Mike Stoops and the Stoops family, Youngstown, Ohio, played at the same high school and Cardinal Mooney in Youngstown. He has that similar characteristics. Uh, he's a fiery leader, kind of a, a, a blue-collar guy who's incredibly intelligent. 
And a guy who, as you mentioned, Mike, I think I think's really handled this entire messy situation with a lot of class. Jason Harmon comes up from the strong safety spot, makes a big 30-12 play as Lord was scrambling, and Nebraska's offense looked good on the first drive. Three and out here. Two defensive backs, Greg Cooper 29, and Jason Harmon 25, just made two really good plays uh -huh. that kept them. Cooper on the reverse, and Harmon that time on Lord. Tackling is the key to bowl games. Missed tackles usually are what teams lose, Bill. Tough. And, and special teams. Yeah, special teams. That and it's tough to stomach watching Nebraska on third and long. <laughs> Kyle Larson to punt it away. A uh, Ray Guy Award finalist. One of the best in the nation. Low snap. Flag down. Booming kick. Shabai holds it in the 27. Looking for a wall to set up. An umbrella of red-shirted Huskers. Shabai is finally brought down at the 25. Remember, a marker is down. We had offside on Michigan State after the 56-yard punt and a return of minus two. You got to obviously decline that. It's not going to get much better than that. No. Larson averaged 45 a kick. Okay, what do is line up and stretch that over our hands with our helmet and line up the loops. But he just warned us. He said, hey. Chris Smeelan, the defensive coordinator for Michigan State, instructing his troops. He came over with John L. Smith yes. and really uh, spiced up a Michigan State defense that was Onside. listing. On the defense, has declined. First down. All right, so the Spartans will take over after their defense did a nice job. Hemming Nebraska in on that drive. Across the country, Capital One Bowl Week has come to the heart of Texas here in San Antonio for the Big 12 against the Big 10. All even at three. 11 have been here on ESPN. Great to be back here in San Antonio. Michigan State and Nebraska. Early field goals. Defenses digging in. The spread attack of the Spartans against the run-only Cornhuskers. First and 10 for Jeff Smoker at MSU. Brown first down pick up a 14 nearly lost the football but the sophomore six foot one did a nice job of hanging on another screen by Michigan State and when you throw it's the, the old jailbreak break screen when you throw this screen you got to make sure you lead your receiver to give him a chance to catch the football and get up field to be able to avoid those oncoming tacklers and again smoker the accuracy to make the throw there and pick up yards Nebraska trying to recognize that they just can't get there the left tack left guard Joe Tate number 68 really made a nice block on that cornerback and allowed that play to work starting his 22nd consecutive game the senior running back now is Jaron Hayes the Pennsylvania man takes it for a couple of yards it's a Pennsylvania under center and Jeff Smoker we mentioned his suspension for substance abuse last year we asked Jeff yesterday how tough 2003 has been you know it was an easy time for me this past year you know uh, the hardest thing I've had ever had to go through but I'm definitely a better person for it um, you know I've enjoyed this year more than any other year. I've had just had a blast playing football. Just realized how much I love it once, since I wasn't able to play part of the season last year. Um, just being around the guys, competing, going out in the field each week, you know, and it, it's been a great year, and I've just had so much more fun. And his performance has showed it. Underneath to Alexander, Aaron hauled it in, and he's pulled down at the 45. We have third and four coming up. Statistically, here's a Smoker's rundown. True freshman starter in 2000 came in. Ryan Van Dyke uh, battle, and it was won by Smoker. Then 2001 on a record pace, helped the bowl win over Fresno. But then 2002 struggling, rumors going on, and then the suspension for the substance abuse problem earned his way back in 2003's off season and spring. Got the starting job in August and has led Michigan State back to a bowl game. Tonight, Smoker's 7 of 8 for 60 yards. He and State will have third and four when quarter two begins. A field goal apiece. First 15 minutes in San Antonio. Uh, eight and four. Tied for fourth in the Big Ten, Michigan State. All even at three as we start quarter number two with Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, and Dr. Jerry Punch, Mike Tirico, glad you're with us for the only football game on the final Monday of 2003. 
It's third and four for the Spartans. Nebraska's offside. The question were they induced into the neutral zone. And I think they were. I think the left guard looked like he may have moved. Joe Tate. It's close. Looks like they moved together and maybe Johnson came across. Well, it'll give a first down to Michigan State. So State with a penalty on third and a half yard on the last drive. Led to missing the opportunity in a field goal kick. Here, Bo Polini's Nebraska defense with the flag, and they'll have it at midfield. And that was a good play by Jeff Smoker. If you watched his head, he nodded. I think he changed the snap count, put a little more emphasis on it, and drew him offside. That's an experienced quarterback to do that. Tyrell Dorch is the lone back. It's the Spartans have it at midfield. Jason Randall in motion. Walk on Demario Williams as George moves it forward for four to about the 46-yard line. You know, John L. Smith really had a huge hand in the return of Jeff Smoker to this football program. As Jerry told you at the very top of the show, John L. laid the law down when he came in. He listened with a very blank slate and said, okay, Jeff, you've got to prove that you can do it the right way and earn the respect of everybody back. And uh, John L. told us yesterday, when I sat down with the kid, I could see that he had a good heart. And you really wanted him to succeed. And that helped lead to a detailed plan of 5 a.m. wake-up workouts. Third team, very few reps, having to earn the respect of his teammates back. Roll the pocket to the right. Smoker surveys and throws it in double coverage. It's intercepted. Daniel Bullocks comes up with his second pick on the year. He's one of the twin bullet safeties. The older twin by one minute comes up with the interception. There's a case of a quarterback trusting his arm and waiting for the play to open up. He was waiting and waiting and waiting until the last possible second. Tried to get it in there to Shabaj, and he just couldn't make the throw. You know, we've talked all year about Josh Bullocks and his instincts with the 10 interceptions. But here's his identical, identical twin brother, Daniel, breaking on the ball, cutting right in front of the receiver and making a big play. You know the rule, never throw across your body. Yep. Never. Intercepted all the time. From their own 35, Lord, freeze option. Downfield for Isaiah Fluid. He's got it. First and goal, Cornhuskers at the seven. A pickup of 57 yards. talked about it in the opening show. The fact that Lord Fluellen is the fastest player on the football team, and that's why he got behind him. But the play action, play action, always running, and he gets right past number 22 and goes all the way past him. Bennett. Now, the key thing in Evan, Kirk, remember, this kid, Lord, threw the ball for 146 yards against Colorado. He could throw. Corey Ross banging forward. He's down. Mm. Well, mark him at two. So we'll have second and goal coming up. That was the third longest pass play of the season for Nebraska. And that's the biggest thing you have to defend against, Lee. You mentioned they've run 14 yep. plays. 12 of them run. They lulled Michigan State to sleep. They're up tight to take away the run. Comes down the line. And all these people that say Jamal Lord can't throw, as Lee said, there's a great indication when he's given it a chance to succeed, then he can put the football right in the money. Nice throw and a nice job of the receiver getting down field. Second and goal, two fullbacks into block. Four rocks to the end zone. Touchdown, Nebraska. Third touchdown run of the year for the five foot six sophomore out of Denver. And here's an important stat that Nebraska defense has poured forced 3.5 turnovers per game. You know what happens? They turn it into 11.5 points per game. Woo! They do something with those turnovers. Yep. It's been big for them all year. The defense has set this offense up. At that time, the offense deserves some credit, too. David Dykes hasn't missed an extra point all year. Bangs one through. Well, the leader in the country in interceptions is named Bullets. Josh had 10. The leading brother tandem with interceptions, Josh and Daniel. Two for Daniel this year, the second one there, led by a big pass from Isaiah Fluellen. Corey Ross bangs it in from a couple of yards out. First touchdown of the game, and a touchdown lead for the guys from Lincoln. 
actually more comfortable playing road games for how much stress and uh, grief he took from the fans in Lincoln. Threw a beautiful pass to Isaiah Fluell. And officially 58 yards. It led to the touchdown. Nebraska on top 10 3. Sam Cook's kickoff returnable for DeAndre Cobb, who took three back for touchdown this year. Hit the seam, but got hit hard at about the 20 yard line by Matt Harrion. The tight actually is Cooper. Beg your pardon, the other number 11. <laughs> Capital One Bowl Week continues Wednesday. College game day built by the Home Depot at 11, the Gaylord Hotels Music City Bowl. Wisconsin and Auburn, then the Axel Liberty Bowl. Southern Miss against Utah, two teams we saw this year on Thursday nights. That'll be a good one. Then, in the Mainstay Independence Bowl, Arkansas takes on Missouri at 7.30 Eastern. And who needs Dick Clark? The Diamond Walnut San Francisco Bowl at 10.30 Eastern. <laughs> Colorado State and Boston College on ESPN2. I love Dick Clark. I don't mean that. You go over, go over at midnight, watch yeah. Yeah. the legendary Syracuse along at Times Square, and we'll come back to our games. First and 10 from the 21. Smoker puts one into the Cornhusker bench. It was well covered. Of course, I know you guys will be night-night uh, at about midnight Eastern time on New Year's Eve, getting ready for college game day from Pasadena. Well, we, I think that show gets started, I think, at 9.30 Eastern. So we are on January 1st, 6.30 Pacific time out in Pasadena, where we'll be coming to you live and in color. So yeah, I figure the meeting's at, what, 4.30? 4.30. That's nice. Shut it down probably about 9. Happy New Year. And we'll see you all in the Rose Bowl on New Year's Day. What a great game that'll be with Michigan and USC. Here it's Michigan State and Nebraska. Second and 10 for Smoker. The screen for Hayes. They are dialed in to the screen package. Even Smith, a sophomore to Georgia, forces third and long. We, we keep saying this, but it's pretty obvious of one area that, that they emphasized for the last two or three weeks is the screen. Every different screen they've seen on film They've been able to run through and practice over and over. Look at the recognition right away. Number one, they got pressure. And then the, well, you see interior people chasing down a screen. That tells you that they're seeing it and getting there before the ball is even thrown. It's also telling the offensive line did a lousy job selling, of selling the screen. The screens have lost nine and six guys the last two times. Third and 16, Demorio Williams off the corner. Smoker got away. Can somebody get open? Yes, Alexander, two yards shy of a first down. Aaron is brought down by Lornell McPherson, the nickelback. And the Spartans will be forced to punt again. That's the most important aspect of defending Michigan State. When you face this spread offense, they're going to come up with their yardage. Yep. But as a defensive backfield, a secondary has to come up with big tackles and force them into kicking situations. And that was a great job there by Nebraska. They put pressure, they missed on it, but then they came up with a tackle, and that forced the Michigan State to have to punt. Brandon Fields is the big leg. There's a new personal protector in there. After the injury to Drew Stanton in the first quarter. Drive fields kick goes deep, but those could be returned. Josh Davis, and we had a blocking issue there. We just had good coverage from the Spartans. <laughs> Jeremiah McLaurin got down and made a nice play. Nebraska takes over inside its own 20 when you come back. Alamo, there it is. Battle of the Alamo in 1836, one of the defining moments. This put this uh, city in Texas on the map, a beautiful city along the river. One of the 10 largest in the country, 360 square miles, a huge uh, set of city limits here in San Antonio. Nebraska leads by seven. The carry goes to Ross, who dances in the hole, out to the 19-yard line. Lee Corso, we've been watching this game here yes. for the first 20 minutes. Give me a little feel for what you've seen as a coach as these teams prepare. Well, first of all, both defenses have been well schooled on the opponent's number one place. John L. Smith has stopped the option play. Lord has got minus two yards total rushing. They usually get a lot more than that. And then on the other side, Bo Bellini's team has stopped the screens beautifully. So coaching defensively, to me, has been a very, very good point so far. Yeah, nice to see good defense. Oh, they're well schooled. Second and seven is Ross, got a block. Got to the edge and down to the 26 yard line. Well, Lee talked about the rushing ability of Jamal Lord. Let's take a look at our AOL rushing matchup. This Michigan State defense was 24th in the nation, fourth in the Big Ten, 
in rush defense while Nebraska as usual another top 10 rushing season nationally but they have to be because they're one of the worst passing teams in the country worst in their conference and bottom three in the nation third and short it is Ross again and he twists his way for the first down at the 27 yard line 19 plays now for Nebraska 17 running plays it just tells me that the big test for Michigan State is going to continue to be discipline because they're, they're once again they're getting lulled to sleep here and defending the option and defending the power game and every time Nebraska moves the sticks there's the threat of the potential play action pass to Harry and the tight end on, on a drag route or a deep route to Llewellyn anytime now you can expect that deep ball from the Nebraska offense load them up with three in the backfield and break them all out as receivers deep ball for Dusty Kaiser the third string tight end who deflected it and it falls incomplete so Kaiser, who had one catch all year, going downfield with Herrian as they uh, broke the bone to send five out there. Well, if you're just tuning in, glad you're with us for the 2003 MasterCard Alamo Bowl here in San Antonio. A very tumultuous season for Nebraska. The third winningest program of all time. Only Michigan and Notre Dame have won more. And those two longtime rivals of the Spartans stand ahead of the 780 win Cornhuskers. Yet Nebraska unsure of what its future is with an interim head coach. Lord's pass again, Dusty Kaiser. This time he brings it in. He gets it out to about the 33 yard line. Mike <laughs> Labinjo put the heat on, but. Dusty Kaiser has become the featured receiver here the last two plays. Well, th that throw by Lord, it's, again, not the prettiest, but Michigan State came with a little bit of pressure off the back edge. I think expecting the naked, expecting the play action. They were there. They defended it well. He came up with an unorthodox throwing motion, but he made, uh, made Nebraska at least have an opportunity here to convert on third down. The offensive coordinator, Barney Cotton, also coaches the offensive line and calls the plays. And I think he's doing a nice job of separating runs and passes. Watch this. Third and fourth. Throw caught That's Ross Pilkington out of Fort Collins, Colorado, picked it up at the 42-yard line. Spent a couple of years as a major league baseball, minor league baseball player, I should say. 20th round pick of the Colorado Rockies. His 20th catch on the season moves the chain. While we're talking about Jamal Lord, I'd like to talk about Turner Gill a little bit. The Turner, Turner Gill is a quarterback. He's upstairs in the press box. I just saw him. But he's had Tommy Frazier, Scott Frost, and Eric Crouch as his three quarterbacks. Yo, that's not bad. That might have been the quarterback of one of the greatest football teams in the history of college football, not to win the national title. What was that, 81? 83. 83. 83. Yeah. Miami, maybe when he went for two. Oh, that's right. Oh, Representing the state of Nebraska, the United States House of Representatives. Option to Corey Ross gains a yard. Well, we mentioned Osborne, we mentioned Turner Gill. Frank Solich was part of this team forever. This is the first time a Nebraska team has taken the field in 24 years without Frank Solich as a wow. part of the game. 79, an assistant on through, offensive coordinator for uh, Tom Osborne. And uh, as the firing came, all these coaches, led by Bo Pelini, who you saw on the sideline, the interim head coach, have to deal with the uncertainty for themselves as well as to what will happen next. Will the new head coach be one of them? Will any of them be retained by the new head coach? Second and nine for Jamal Lord. Good looking throw. The receiver slipped and fell. It was Llewellyn. We'll have third and nine coming up. Having experienced that, I think the thing that hurts me the most and, and really makes me feel bad is for the families. You know, the wives and the children of those coaches that don't have any idea what's going to happen. And I, I've been through that a couple of times myself on both sides. And I think the coaches, they can handle it okay because they're working. But Kirk and Mike, it's those families that I feel sorry, the wife and the kids. Well, the no uncertainty. uncertainty. I mean, these guys have been preparing for this game for the last oh. month, realizing that tomorrow yeah. they have no idea what's going to happen with their future. And you have five assistants who are new to the Nebraska scene this year. Job. They know it. Third and nine, flags come in. Well, Steve Peterson, the athletic director, we invited Steve to come in the booth. He has made this a one-man search committee. He's had very little to say. False start. Steve told us that in deference to the players and continuing with what he said when this whole process started last month when Frank Solich was removed from his job, 
that he did not want to come in and talk about the coaching situation. Let it be the day for Bo Pelini to lead these players mm -hmm. and then talk about it uh, as the situation goes on. To be frank, Steve's silence has led to a barrage of rumors. You know, I, I, I could tell you Joe Paterno is going to leave Penn State and coach Nebraska. Yeah, throw him in there. <laughs> Everybody, throw him in the mix. Every NFL, every guy who's ever connected on a flight through Nebraska, <laughs> who's ever been in the city, has been included in there. I don't know how many people really know what's going on. Hard situation to get a grasp on. Hard to get a grasp for this guy in the open field. But a good job by Michigan State of bringing down Jamal Lord as Labinjo is there. They knocked the ball free, but after he was down, and it's punting time for the Court Huskers. I like Labinjo. Lost 15 pounds. Pulled tires up this summer in uh, his native Toronto, Ontario, to get himself back in shape after ballooning to nearly 270 pounds as a middle linebacker last year. And he is a physical specimen. I remember walked in the room, mm -hmm. I said, wow, yeah. look at that guy. 6'1", 252, and all man. One of the 203 people from Funk, Nebraska. That's the population there. Kyle Larson, the punter. Trying to pin Shabai and the Spartans inside the 20. And we'll just do that. It'll be down at the 13. He was good at that this year. 20 of 61 kicks inside the 20. Long field for Jeff Smoker and the Spartans halfway through the second. <laughs> Mike Lee, Kirk, and Doc with you from San Antonio. Great to have our entire Thursday night crew. Our pleasure to be here at the MasterCard Alamo Bowl. A 10-3. Nebraska lead. Michigan State's offense has been stymied by the Nebraska defense. See if Smoker and company can get going. Karen Hayes on the toss. Gets it out close to the 20-yard line. Well, if you're just joining us back in Big Ten country, here's how your Spartans have uh, gotten going offensively. Very nice opening drive, but five plays and a pick. Smoker through late into double coverage. Three and out, and this drive starting now at the 14-yard line. But as you see, it's been a long field for Michigan State on each of the four possessions. John L. Smith turned 55 the uh, Saturday of the Wisconsin game. Not exactly a happy birthday. 56-21 loss in Badger country. Smokers pass underneath, hauled in by Kyle Brown. Third down coming up, and here's Jerry Punch. Well, Michael, I'm with Jay and Sue Smoker. Jeff Smoker's parents have agreed to come down and chat a little bit. In fact, Sue has agreed to be the spokesman. We're like in my family. The wife does all the talking here. And Sue, Jeff told us yesterday that unconditional love by his mom and dad is what got him through the last 13 months. What was the most difficult part for you watching your son go through treatment and uh, recovery? I think uh, as a parent, you want to fix things when your child is hurting. And we realized we couldn't fix this that we had to just love and let go and let God. We'll come back to Sue and Doc momentarily. First third and three. Jeff is flushed and has to put one up towards Alexander and his tall receiver couldn't pull it in. But a penalty marker comes in late. The aggravated person in the white hat was the Nebraska head coach, Bo Pelini. As uh, the field judge through a flag that looks to be pass interference in the defense. So Michigan State will keep the ball and let's go back to Jared. Mom, what do you see as the biggest challenge for him in the future in battling this illness? I think that um, Jeff needs to uh, prepare himself mentally, physically, and especially spiritually to meet the everyday challenges of life because there will be more adversity um, down the road. Life, life holds numerous adversities. What is the message that his battle sends to young people who may be watching at home right now who may have a similar problem or maybe battling a similar illness? What is the message that his courage sends out to them? You can always change your life. There's tomorrow. Admit you have a problem. Seek treatment. Get into AA. Work the 12-step program. And just live your life just day by day. And you can change your life. 
And indeed there is, Mom. He has worked very hard to change his life. There is hope. I think Muhammad Ali said it best. Nothing wrong with getting knocked down as long as you agree to get right back up. Thanks for coming down, Mom and Dad. Thank you. Thank you. Michael? Good people, Jerry. Blue Collar Town, Manheim, Pennsylvania, in southeast Pennsylvania where the uh, smokers are from. And uh, Jeff said one of the great things about his mom and dad uh, being so helpful and supportive that when Jeff had to go through the five-game suspension at the balance of 2002 season, they came, came to East Lansing, went on the road, went to every game, to continue their support of the Spartan program, the Spartan family, as a university, not just a football team, and of their son. That pass interference penalty kept the drive alive. After the loss of one, this is deflected and incomplete. Nebraska's pressure able to get the job done. Josh Bullocks, the big pick man, came in as he and Demario Williams knocked it away. This Michigan State offense has struggled here in the first half. We're under five minutes to go in the first half, and I know that they have to be able to throw with Jeff Smoker, but I also tell you that with Nebraska playing a 4-2-5, their nickel package, you have to be able to have some threat at running the football to set up that passing game. 12 yards rushing with a little under five minutes to go into a 4-2-5 defense isn't going to cut it for Michigan State. They have to be able to win that battle up front to help out Jeff Smoker in the passing game. Williams and Bernard Thomas in the starting blocks as defensive ends. The pressure comes up the middle. Smoker does get time. Alexander gets it. He's shy of a first down. Nebraska's doing a great job, Kirk, as you alluded to, getting pressure but keeping coverage so the MSU receivers are right in front of everybody. Yeah, it's one thing for a coach to go up to a grease board and kind of draw up a game plan and hope that it comes to fruition. Bo Pelini here in this first half could not draw up a better package than what has happened for his defense. Getting pressure, taking chances at times, but being conservative and relying on that secondary on third and long to come up and make a tackle short of the first down and to force the punt yet again. Josh Bullock's back to receive the punt from Brandon Fields with two great punch tonight this one goes uh, hard left <laughs> and out of bounds at the 20 that punch just 38 yards no return Nebraska will take over leading by seven Jamal Lord back on the field when you come back we're so glad to have Nebraska on ESPN we saw the Cornhuskers in late September in Hattiesburg as they handled Southern Miss. Nebraska's losses this year by 17 at Missouri, by 24 at Texas, by 21, or I'm sorry, 29 to Kansas State. All three running quarterbacks beating them. Jamal Lord, a running quarterback, is on the run. Off to the races. There goes Jamal Lord. Inside the 20. And out of bounds. Back at the 13. That play covered 66 yards before Roderick Maples was able to take him down. That's the second time in the last few series they've had a big play on first and 10. Remember the big pass play to Flewellen was 58 yards. This time he just gets a counter with the quarterback and he's going to come around and then use his speed to get to the outside. This is a nice job on first and 10. Michigan State, they're being, again, lulled to sleep. They follow the tailback and then he gets in the out open the field. Good block to spring him loose and then Lord has the speed almost to take it to the distance. And Corey Ross takes the first down down carry up the middle to the six it's second and two coming up Greg Cooper filled in there that run by Lord 66 yards longest of his Nebraska career the reason why that play worked is Greg Taplin number 94 did a very poor job of keeping contained and that was the first naked bootleg that they had for Jamal Lord very well coached play Here's Ross again he gets us to the outside he's at the Michigan State lost contained from the outside and allowing that Nebraska speed to bounce it and then get to the corner for a touchdown for Ross. Two rushing touchdowns for Ross, as many as he had all season here in the second quarter. David Dykes adds the extra point 
Another three play touchdown drive. The first one 64 yards. This one 80. Nebraska leading 17 3. Let's get you set for the Dodge halftime report back in the studio. And a good evening to Reese Davis. All right, Michael, we're certainly looking for. I think a lot of people will stay around if they're going to yeah. tell us who the next coach in Nebraska is going to be. <laughs> we know nothing, they know less. Do you think so? Absolutely. I'll tell you what, the public pressure on Steve Peterson to hire Bo Pelini is out there from the team and the fans who like what they saw out of the Nebraska defense this year. Yep. It's going to be out there even more if they have a big win here tonight. A lot of time to go. A lot of time. DeAndre Cobb is brought down inside the 20, back at the 14, for the third special teams play involving Ira Cooper. Levin's all over the place. Yeah. Coop, Coop's making plays. Well, this is the big one that Lee talked about yeah, where Tapley Watson came seen. down. Yep. If you watch 90, 94 tap, what he did is step to the inside and allow Lord to the outside. And he was in perfect position defensively to hold his ground, but he didn't. And this time, LeBenjo got hooked yeah. by a, a tight end. Then he has no opportunity to stay to the outside to force to play back to the inside. Both times, the speed of Nebraska and a lack of discipline by Michigan State's defense hurt him. And John L. Smith is not happy. As to what's going on, grab the mic, take the hat with it. John L. is uh, up tight. His offense has to get going. Goes 90 yards on 25 plays for the Spartans. Smoker down the middle for Kyle Brown. Incomplete with Lornell McPherson in coverage. Well, he, he got the coverage that he wanted. The play developed perfectly. He just missed a big play there. If he was able to just pull it back just a little bit, I think it would have been a big play for Michigan State in the passing game there. I know they're behind here in a situation 17 to 3, but they got to be very careful. They're throwing the ball against the number one pass defense in the nation when it comes to efficiency, and they get interceptions. If they get one here and go in and score, it's good night, sweetheart. They don't have a chance. And they're, they're throwing an obvious, if obvious they, passing situation. they get situation. a touchdown here, and put them asleep the way their defense is playing. Second and 10, here comes pressure. Smoker got rid of it to Aguin Shabazz. Going down. I think Nebraska's doing a great job oh, of yeah. when they bring pressure, they are making tackles and making plays. Well, that's the big thing. Again, the perimeter guys have to come up and make the tackles. They're going to throw it underneath. The linebackers and the secondary people, when you bring the pressure, Bullocks almost gets the smoker. By the time he gets rid of the ball to Shabazz, then all of a sudden, look at the, look at the red shirts. We call them black shirts or red shirts, but look at all the red shirts all over the place coming up to make the tackle. And that's Bernard Thomas, the starting left defensive end. Yep. As they mix coverages, drop people, some zone blitz look, safety blitz. Who's coming here? There's the tight end dropping back. 88, Trevor Johnson. Now he's coming back down. And here he comes. And that's thrown nowhere. This is a brilliant, it's brilliant defensive package thus far from Bo Pelini and the Huskers and Jeff Smoker and the Spartans have no clue right now. It's confusion for Jeff Smoker. It's confusion, more importantly, for the Michigan State offensive line. Trevor Johnson, a defensive end, who they have moved all over the field, drops back over the slot, now all of a sudden puts his hand back down, and they just simply bring four. And when he goes back to Pelini's point, when he can get pressure with four and drop the rest, the seven back into coverage, you're going to be very successful as a defense. The Steve Stewart, the right tackle, just got beat physically for Get all the strategy. <laughs> you can say it any way you want to. Not a good punt from Fields. Josh Bullock's going to let it bounce and come to an end here at the 30. Ooh, I think 33, maybe the 32-yard line as we approach the two-minute mark. Huge continuation of Capital One Bowl League coming up here on ESPN. Tomorrow, 4 Eastern, college game day presented by Outback. Then 4.30 Eastern, Navy, great running team. Texas Tech, great throwing team. What contrast to the EV1 Nep Houston Bowl? Where we always are, the Pacific Life yeah. Holiday Bowl. Washington State, number 14 in the land, number five, Texas. You'll see the Longhorns. And then UCLA taking on Fresno State in the Silicon Valley Football Classic. What a great three games on ESPN and ESPN2. Tomorrow it gets even better on New Year's Eve. From the 33, Jamal Lord's throw is good to Flewellen out of bounds. 
at the 45. Now some uh, words behind the play with Richie Incognito and Kevin Vickerson. Well, there, there have been words all week in San Antonio between these two teams. You knew that, especially with Richie Incognito, who kind of has been sitting back and not saying much all week, but tonight you knew he had an opportunity to try to make amends for lacking opportunity in some of the luncheons this week. But they, you knew we were going to see some some extracurricular activities tonight. First and ten after the pickup. Lord. Llewellyn. To the 46. Pickup of nine. Hold on a sec. Is this? Uh, we're gonna, the, I'm going to borrow yeah. Ron Franklin's line. Like, good Lord. <laughs> yeah. Jamal looks good here. That's yeah. Nebraska. You know, the, the interesting Brown, thing, Brown, Isaiah Fluin, Fluellen, you know who recommended him to the offensive coaches? Remember what he told us? Yep. Bo. Bo Pelini said, the only guy you got that our guys are afraid of is sitting over in a scout team. Please play him. He's done well. Third throw. Third completion. Third to Fluellen. First down at the 40. Jamal Lord is approaching 100 passing yards. Jeff Smoker has 83. What odds would you have given me that Lord would have more first half passing yards than Smoker? Oh, man. It's, it's big a remarkable ones. first half for both the Jamal Lord and also uh, the Nebraska defense. But going back to Lee's point, it's so important to have a receiver with this offense that wants to run the football over and over and over just to have a guy to threaten the defense to prevent them from putting nine or ten guys up a, to stop the option and to stop the power game. And Flo Ellen gives on that guy that slant pass is on the deck and incomplete intended for Ross Pilkington as Seth Mitchell who has chronic knee problems is down on the play Mitchell out of Maryland third leading tackler on this team who has uh, progressively seen one knee injury after the other short circuit his uh, days on the field in East Lansing shaken up here Tough first half for John L. Smith, who lost his backup quarterback, Drew Stanton, in punt coverage earlier. As they help Mitchell off, we step out for a moment. In this first half, Jeff Smoker and the Spartan offense only limited to three in the first half. Back on November 1st, when they lost to Michigan 27-20, that was the keep-away game with Chris Perry carried 51 times. Second and ten, Lord has Fluellen wide open! Couldn't pull it in. That is not Fluellen's fault. Lord needed to throw that pass just a little bit inside so he didn't have to stretch to stay in bounds. And Darren Barnett, who got beat earlier, he got left on a hook and go at about 10 yards downfield. He he bought up because that's what they, they've been throwing that underneath route. He came up and Fluellen went right around him. He could have walked down the sidelines into the end zone. And Mike, you're right. Lord's ball took him out of bounds. You see Barnett come over. There are no names on the Michigan State jerseys. That's one of the first things John L. Smith did. Names off the jerseys. Nobody's wearing number one for team unity. We need to tighten things up here. Third and ten. Lord trying to escape. Looking to throw. Looking like a big-time quarterback if he can complete this one. We just threw it out of bounds. Smart play. Don't force the turnover. He has a... Uh, Players strewn all over the field chasing after him. And one of them, Clifford Dukes, did not make it off the field under his own power, and he is shaken up. So Dukes and Mitchell, two starters for Michigan State, have gone down here in this first half. There's Dukes, five sacks, uh, six sacks, I beg your pardon, on the season. Had the 65-yard touchdown on the fumble return against Michigan. The hardest worker on the defense is in some pain. Really have to be impressed with this front seven of Michigan State. The size of them, but a lot of times tonight they've shown the speed. These guys can run from being big guys. Punt coming from Larson. The 41. Try to pop him inside the 20 as he did last time. If he kicks. He does. Hit a Nebraska player on the back and goes out of bounds. His purpose is served as he is downed at the 10. Well, we talked about that Nebraska coaching situation. The guys are going to address it back in the studio at halftime. It is... 
uncomfortable to say the least for everybody involved here for Steve Peterson the athletic director everyone's waiting on what he's going to do my recommendation and I said it publicly and I said again I think you ought to look at Dennis Green and I'll tell you why you should look at it. Number one, he's coaching the Big Ten. He's coaching the Pac-10. He's coaching the National Football League. He's a highly respected minority football coach who's out there with the best experience of anybody. I think you ought to look at Dennis Green. I think he's an outstanding football coach. I, you know what? I, we, we've talked with Steve Peterson yep. for the last three weeks about names or possibilities. And any name that gets brought up is purely speculation at this point. The one thing that I would recommend is I don't care if it's an NFL coach. I don't care if it's a college coach. Nebraska has to go back to recruiting athletes. The foundation of this team is remarkable when you compare them to Texas or you compare them to Oklahoma. You know, three or four years ago, Nebraska didn't have to take a back seat. Forget about wins and losses. I'm just taking, talking about the athletic ability on the roster. If you look at Nebraska's athletic ability uh -huh. and compare them to the elite teams in the Big 12, they're here and Nebraska's here. Whoever comes in needs to have a, a way of trying to get the athletes to take Nebraska back to a different level. But you also brought a point up, I think, that is very important. When the press has the conference, everybody's got to go, wow. Because why would you get a guy and fire him that averaged nine wins and three losses in six years and bring in a, huh? Well, that, that's what hurts Bo Pelini. Bo Pelini is qualified. He's a great coach. He's got a, a great resume. He's been around a lot of great uh, coaches himself. But you got to remember that when Steve Peterson fired a coach that won nine games this year, he was in the national championship game two years ago. You have to walk into that room and say, voila, exactly. here he is. And the, room's, the room just has a, ooh, wow, big high. Well, you talk about victories for coaches since 1998. There's where Frank Solich is on that list. Up there with uh, some of the best and ahead of Lloyd Carr, Frank Beamer, Nick Saban, Mike Bellotti, Barry Alvarez, Joe Tiller, all really good coaches. And he's right there on that list. Now, a couple of those guys, Carr among them, have better winning percentages than Solich, but he's right up there should, with Should them. he still be on the sidelines tonight, Mike? Frank Solich? Yeah. In your mind? Tonight? As the coach? Second and 12 here. Give me my 30 seconds if anybody cares. We do. Good tackle. Nebraska trying to work this out and takes a timeout here. Barrett Rude came up with the play. It's. I guess that it's a unique situation because Nebraska is a state passion. Nebraska football gets oh, the million plus, million point seven people in Nebraska all following it. And to sit here with uncertainty for a month leads to all the speculations and speculation and rumors even more than it might in another situation i think would have been a nice thing to offer frank solich the opportunity to coach this game and then make the change afterwards it put everybody in an awkward situation i come back to what you always say it's very hard for a guy to get his first head coaching opportunity at a huge place right and i think the bigger picture question down the line maybe we'll explore this in the second half is the Nebraska job still a great job in college football? And I've told you a hundred times, and listen before I leave you guys, jobs you're are all leaving, relative. You're not I know, but jobs are all relative yes. to the one you've got. Mm -hmm. This is a wonderful job if you're sitting home right now on the sofa. Yep. But if you've got a job making $2 million a year well, somewhere, it's not a very good job. I understand that. My point is you would leave certain big places to come to Nebraska to coach five years ago. Will you do that now? That's the point. But again, my question, should Frank Solich, forget about this yes. bowl game, should he be the coach oh, still? Year? Should he still be here as a head coach? Third and ten. They've used two timeouts. The inside handoff to Hayes. He's brought down. Nebraska used the timeouts well. It's defense dominant. They're going to force Michigan State to punt. Give them an opportunity for a block or a return here with 15 seconds. I, I think one thing where I give Steve Peterson a lot of credit, it takes, Her. as Bill Rafter, he says, onions. <laughs> to fire a nine and three coach and Steve Peterson saw the future of Nebraska football beyond the record the cosmetic and that it was uncertain in the direction and he had to make a change before it got too bad I think we all love Frank Solich as a person I, I, I can't stand people to jump the gun after a year or two years with some of these coaches Frank Solich was here for five or six years and I think you have to look beyond the nine wins beyond being in the national championship last or two years ago it's more about again the core the athletic ability where this program is headed the other thing is i think the days of running the great option football that nebraska has known for years and that being your base and your foundation those days are over i think they need to open it up and have an offense that's more balanced because that's going to help recruiting as much as anything if you're a great receiver would you come play for this offense 
question there. Get, the freshman punter's not in there. This is Dave Rayner who does the rugby kick that we saw John L. do at Louisville. Gets a nice kickoff. It is fielded by Josh Bullock's near midfield. He gets to the 40, and Nebraska will have a snap with five seconds left, but the penalty marker came down on the return, and it might push them back. That was a good job of clock management mm -hmm. for guys who have not been in the head coaching situation to use the three timeouts, force the punt, perhaps get one shot at the end zone. But from the spot of the foul, they're going to have <laughs> it's a long throw for 57 it. yards. <clears throat> on the return, holding on the returning team, 10 yards, spot of the foul, first down. You mentioned what a, a great guy Frank Solich is. Yep. Credit to the profession and to the legend of Nebraska football. Here is what he did as the head coach, replacing Tom Osborne and following the lineage from Devaney to Osborne to Solich, keeping it in the family. The 7-7 seven seven Independence Bowl year is the one that sticks out after going 11-2 to the Rose Bowl. Rose Bowl, national title game. Two years later, after 9-3, you're no longer the coach. Five seconds left. Final play. They'll run the Big Ben play. Coming off on alignment. Flag is down as Lord tries to reach the end zone. It is caught by the receiver. But time has run out as he is stopped. Craig Taplin involved with Richie Incognito. Lost his headgear. These two have been going at it all game. They continue their words here behind the play. It's holding on Nebraska see another flag downfield so I think this is going to bring the first half to a frustrated Spartan end and I'm saying this before it happens mm -hmm. if Watch these it. officials don't take over yeah. this ball game it's going to be a problem yeah, in the second half you mark it down well, they need to watch Richie Incognito because he's got a lot of build up frustration for Greg Taplin we've seen it the entire first half so that is Jerry Punch, who's down there with Bo Pelini. Doc? Well, Coach, up by 14, your first half as a head coach. Uh, what are your thoughts after being a head coach for only 30 minutes? Well, the guys are playing hard. Uh, it, it, things are going our way right now. But uh, it's a long way to go, and uh, our guys, we just keep keep doing what, you, what we're doing. We're, we're moving the ball on offense, and our guys are playing smart on defense. We're getting some pressure, and that's been a key for us. How do you ration your time at halftime between being defensive coordinator and now head coach? Well, I'm taking care of the defense first. The offense is in good hands right now, and uh, I have a lot of confidence in what they're doing on that side of the ball. Thank you very much, Coach. Guys? Yeah, Barney Cotton in the offense, 143 yards rushing. 100 passing. Meantime, Michigan State on the ground. 13 carries, 7 yards. That's 20 inches per attempt. But my man Bo with his first interview. How'd he do? Okay? Did a nice job. Yeah. What, do you think? what do you think, Lee? I'm telling you, he's Italian, isn't he? <laughs> now the Dodge <laughs> halftime report. It's natural. And here's our buddy Reese Davis, RD. In the Alamo City, the 2003 MasterCard Alamo Bowl. Second half set to get underway. Nebraska will receive the ball after breaking a three-all first quarter tie with 14 second quarter points against the Big Ten Coach of the Year, John L. Smith, and the Michigan State Spartans, Jeff Smoker. Final half as a collegiate performer, 12 of 18 for 83 yards. Better stat numbers for Jamal Lord, the off-maline Nebraska quarterback trying to go out on a high note. Mike Tirico, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, Dr. Jerry Punch, glad to have you on board. Spartans kick off to start this second half. Dave Rayner's moving leg takes it to the back of the end zone. No return and a touchback. Nebraska on top here by the count of 17 to 3. And Lee Corso, what a half for Jamal Lord. Jamal Lord has been sensational running and passing, but also an interesting thing. Nebraska has 143 yards rushing, 140 yards passing. Beautiful balance, Kirk Herbstreit. Beautiful balance. Yeah, and considering this is an offense that all year long has had great games and games that have been predicated on their running game, and you knew coming in they had to be able to establish that run, but Michigan State has broken down at times and given Jamal Lord the big pass play, and Lord has taken advantage of it. First and ten out of the shotgun. Lord keeps it, gets to the edge, and picks up a half dozen. On first down, spilled off the corner. 
by Al Ashton Watson. How about the bounds, bud? Well, the, the first half for Nebraska on both sides of the ball went about as well as you could ask. And a lot of big plays on first and ten. Here the play action to Flewellen. Late a little bit later, they had Ross come up through the middle. And again, they're mixing the play, calling Pilkington. They're keeping him guessing. Taplin comes down, committing to the run. And that's where Jamal Lord made him pay for it and got to the outside. They're making the Michigan State defense respect every aspect of this offense. Nebraska has taken a time out here. They broke the huddle with 12. That would have immediately meant an illegal substitution flag. So instead, they take the time out to avoid the penalty. And we'll have second and four coming up. Look at the numbers from the first half and uh, illustrate the balance. 143 rushing, 140 passing. But uh, guys, tell me what Michigan State has to do here in the second half. Well, yeah, rocket scientist. Seven <laughs> rushing yards, Mike. Well, that, there you have it. I think that's <laughs> the big thing. I mean, you have seven rushing yards. And yeah. Nebraska's playing a nickel defense. Now that you're down by 14 points to get into the second half, now it's going to become obvious you're going to have to be able to throw the football. But the, when Nebraska's defense, no matter who they play this year, when you know that they're going to throw, that's where Bo Pelini's going to mix up his schemes and try to keep Jeff Smoker guessing and keep that offensive line guessing. But if I was John L. Smith, I think I've got to take a couple long shots. They've got everybody in Nebraska seven to eight yards deep and making those tackles. Go over the top. What do you got a chance? If nothing else, loosen them up, Mike. Wouldn't you say that it's something we question with Purdue when Joe Tiller came into the Big Ten and they were able to do it as time went on. If you run this spread, especially in the Big Ten, where you still must run the ball to be effective, Michigan State's going to have to become more proficient in that part of the game. Well, they're going to have to recruit some skill. I mean, it, what he's been at, what John L. Smith accomplished this year is amazing. I know he had a nice quarterback, but watch Michigan State two or three years from now as John L. Smith recruits receivers and recruits running backs to fit his scheme. They'll become much more physical and have that kind of attitude that you're talking about with Joe Tiller and Purdue. Ross lost a yard. Askew and Rasmussen in on the stop. An important third down coming for this defense. And John L. Smith is a guy who turned programs around at Idaho and then at Louisville and now trying to do it here at Michigan State. It's Llewellyn, the speedy guy, top of the screen. Labinjo, the pressure. The pass is incomplete. That had to come out early because of the pressure from Mike Labinjo and Jamal Lord took the worst of that rush. Important for Nebraska. Obviously important for Michigan State, too. The early going in the second half, you know, it's the first series here, but Nebraska came out with a purpose when they came out of the locker room to start the football game, and it's very important that they pick up that same tempo, and for Michigan State, now they have to also come out and try to match that and maybe even take it up to a different level. But Nebraska did not look the same as far as their enthusiasm and execution there in that first series. Kyle Larson to punt, Hakeem Shabai back to a seat. Nice high kick. Fair catch signaled for and made by Shabai back at the 28. A punt of 48 yards. So it's a strong punting game continuing for Larson as they look at Jamal Lord who took that shot. They get up under the pad to look at that left shoulder and here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Doc. Listen, guys at halftime, the message in the locker room for Michigan State and John Ellsmith was very simple. It was simply said, guys, quit talking and start playing. There's no uh, no mystery as to why we're not running our offense. We're out there running our yaps, and we're not playing. When guys run by our guards and are blocked, our quarterback has no time to throw the football. We've got to execute our offense, keep our mouths shut, and give our quarterback some time in the second half. We'll see if it works. All right. Thanks, Jerry. Good stuff. From the 27, Smoker fake one pass, and then this one is incomplete with the pressure right in his face. Again, getting pressure with four is just, it, it's, they're just getting whipped up front by the front four of, of uh, Nebraska. And it, look at the, the, the mixture and the combination of different things that they've been able to do and the different personnel. Bo Pelini has mixed in a number of players in the front to stay fresh. And the most important thing is they're athletic and they're fast. The Michigan State's offensive line cannot give Jeff Smoker enough time. This defense well-schooled and well-prepared for this Michigan State offense. Joe Daly, backup quarterback for Nebraska, true freshman warming up as they continue to look at the left shoulder of Jamal Lord. Second and ten. This time, there is time for Smoker. And an eight-yard completion to Kyle Brown, the busiest of the green and white receivers tonight. We'll have third and two ahead. More of the underneath stuff that you're talking about, Lee. Mm -hmm. you got to think eventually 
as you said, you got to take a chance just to get them behind them, if nothing else, just to make them respect that because the defense coming in realize that's what Michigan yeah. State's done all year is thrown underneath. And if I was John L. Smith, I'd go more shotgun and five step drops. No more seven step drops because you can't protect the passer. Jeff Smoker along there. Technically, it's third and one. They need a yard and a half to get it. Got to be quick. They hand it up inside, and Terrell Brooks will get the first down. Just shy of the 40. There's the extra Bush. shove from Sean Poole. And that leads to the continued conversation. If you didn't catch us earlier on, Friday night they had a get-together, as every bowl does with the teams. The teams are seated right next to each other at dinner. Well, somebody, and Michigan State players admitted it was on their side, get up, got up and started the conversation. It uh, exacerbated a little disagreement to the point where one player told us, I was grabbing a chair and I was ready just in case. And it sounded like a Jerry Springer episode was ready to break out <laughs> at this nice little bowl gathering. The yapping continued at the luncheon on Saturday that Doc did a great job emceeing with me. And uh, it was interesting, to say the least. Smoker up top for Alexander, underthrown and incomplete. Good job by Josh Bullets there to break it up. That's got to be neat back there, guys. They're twin brothers, identical twins, a minute apart in birth, playing together in the secondary, both sophomores out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. That time, they're very lucky the ball was not thrown on the money because if he did not force Alexander to have to come back, Bullocks would have been able to pick up his 11th interception of the season. That Alexander's going to be a nice-looking athlete, a former quarterback at 6'5", 205. He understands coverages, and that's why he's developed into a really good receiver. Caught eight passes against Penn State in the last ball game. It's going to be a good one. Second and ten. No back, so they'll throw it again. Eric not the tight end. Hit as he could not hold on by Fabian Washington who got beat up as a freshman, true freshman corner, and picked on, but had a much better sophomore year, third team, all Big 12, by the coaches. Fabian told me yesterday, boy, I couldn't, my head was spinning last year. True freshman, they were picking on me. This year, I felt so much more comfortable. And now with Washington and the Bullocks twins, those are three sophomore DBs, pretty good for Nebraska. You know, and the senior, Pat Ricketts, I think it's all about the scheme. Last year, they played man-free almost every snap, and they got torched in the secondary. This year, a lot more zone pressures, and I think the beneficiaries have been that second one. Third and ten. Who's coming? Three, four, five? They'll try to get there with four again. Time for Smoker. It's all underneath. Here's the big tight end. Now barrels forward. Head down. He's got the first down at midfield. Polini was trying to get the official, the line judge, to spot it on the other side of the 50. But a good job by the line judge. Robert Baker's correct. Mark moves the chains for Michigan State. Every single game we do, there's a tight end, 6'3", 6'4", 6 6 6 at about 265 or 270. And these guys can run. I mean, every single time. I'd like to try to make a tack on Eric Knott when he's coming full steam like that. And Pat Ricketts, 5'11", 180 pounds, trying to take on 270 pounds. Running about a 4-6. First and 10. Spartans into Husker territory. Screen for Dortch was broken up. Actually, Alexander, the receiver, came back as Dortch was trying to get out there as well. I have a recommend recommendation for the <laughs> offensive coordinator, Dave Baldwin. I would be very conscious not to throw too many more screens. I promise you, right, if they throw another one, they're going to intercept it. If that was the play, would have been perfectly thrown. They would have intercepted and scored. Well, the, the, watch the Nebraska defense from up here. It's a lot easier to see maybe than, than what Jeff Smoker's yeah. dealing with. Watch oh. the corner, Pat Ricketts. Pat Ricketts, watch how quick he reads screen. He's looking yeah, at Alexander's that, screen. It. The ball's not even thrown yet, and he's already breaking to come up because he's reading the offensive lineman and seeing that the, the play's developing right in, before his eyes. And all of that factors into Michigan State, averaging two yards per first down here tonight. Show pressure with Bullocks. He comes. Also breaking in his hollow, but Smoker rolled away from the pressure into coverage. Oh, that was a very ill-advised throw. Daniel Bullocks almost had his second pick of the night. You know, it's interesting about Nebraska's pass defense. They've had one interception in all 12 ball games, but there's a wonderful note. They've had two or more interceptions in nine straight games. 
Kirk, that is magnificent pass defense when you can do that. And here, Daniel Bullock is baiting Jeff Smoker just like he did the first time. And when, when you see Smoker get outside the pocket, all the anticipation and the accuracy and the decision making seems to go out the window. He's comfortable in the pocket. You get him on the outside, and Daniel Bullock is starting to play a little bit with Jeff Smoker, trying to bait him to throw that football for the interception. He's watching up. his eyes, Mike. Yep. That's what he's doing. They picked up the last third and ten. Here's another one underneath and incomplete for Jason Randall, the tight end. He lost a kick of the way. T.J. Hollowell on the coverage. So the Spartans pick up a first down on that opening drive, but the Nebraska defense gets John L's offense back off the field. It's three linebackers that Nebraska has, and I know they've kind of gone to a different package for tonight's game, but T.J. Hollowell, Barrett Rudy inside, Demario Williams, all three all year have been exceptional for this Nebraska defense. On shorter punts, they go to their field goal kicker, Dave Rayner, who does the rugby punt, roll out and kick it. We'll see if he pulls that off here with Josh Bullock's back deep to receive. That started with Papa John, did it, a couple years ago? Louver. Inside the one. Perfectly executed. It looked ugly, but it's perfect execution. 99 yards to go. They needed to flip the field. Jamal Lord, they were looking at his shoulder. Looks like he's ready to come back in there and continue his hot night in the MasterCard Alamo Bowl. Offense needs the support of the fans that made the trip. 99 yards to go. Michigan State really needs to make something happen on this drive. A quick stop, get the ball back. Lord keeps it. Gains just a yard. Out to the two as the conversation See. continues. Go ahead. Yeah, the referee's got it. Yep. Beyond just kind of stepping in and saying a few things, we've seen this all year. The games that end up getting to the fourth quarter where you get a lot of you know, talking that turns into fisticuffs are the games where the referees didn't control it early. Lee touched on it. I agree with you, Lee. We've seen it all season. They've got to jump in and give them that warning and say one more time, and it's going to be 15 yards and a personal foul. Second and nine. There are Spartan fans down to the left corner of Lord. As they run the fullback out to the five. Saw John L. Smith. It's the question you get all the time. And living in Michigan, when we got hired, people said, what does that L stand for? Well, you know, and, and Llewellyn, maybe Lawrence. John L's always, he said, sometimes people think it's for Lucifer. <laughs> when he was at Utah State, it was for Logan. When he was at the U of L, it was for Louisville. Louisville. And now he says it's for Lansing. <laughs> trim. He actually had to start using John L. Smith because when he was at Utah State, there were three assistant coaches with the name John Smith in the coaching office, and John L. was used for differentiation. Third and five, deep ball for Flewellen. Incomplete. If you throw a pick there, it's just like a punt. Now Nebraska is going to have to rely on its very good punter to get him out of this hole. Well, Mike, you talked about flipping the field. And they didn't come up with a turnover just yet, but they did come up with a three and out, and it's going to give them great field position. That's two three and outs yep. here in this half for the Spartan defense. Kyle Larson, as mentioned earlier, out of Funk, Nebraska. So the population went up since he's been a Cornhusker from 197 to 203 there in Funk. And I'm sure almost all of them are watching his native son kick here tonight for the final time in Husker Red and White. This is a perfect time for State to get a good punt return because those Nebraska guys will be blocking first and not cover fast. Great, great, great kick. Shabai from the 37. Nice. Hemmed in and brought down at the 43. I forgot the throw factor there where they kicked the ball about 60 yeah, yards every time. Shabai's going left. Shabai should go bye bye. <laughs> Run straight, Shabai. We have to say bye bye for a minute. Yes. So we'll be right back. <laughs> Pep rally held down by the river. Both teams riding those boats. If you've ever come here as a tourist to get the chance to, it's a great ride. And uh, Jeff Smoker leading the uh, Michigan State guys. And that was Friday night when the angst between the two sides became apparent. 
17-3, Nebraska leads. Best field position of the night for Michigan State at its own 42-yard line. Smoker underneath to Shabai, and again Shabai takes it out. Close to midfield. Hurt his left knee on the third play of the 2002 season. Has come back here for a 53-catch campaign in 03. This interesting stat. Smoker started out 10 for 12, and now has only hit five of the last 15. And the reason why that is is Bo Bellini has changed his defense, Kirk and Mike, and he's playing more cushion inside, doing a nice job of adjustments by Bo Bellini. And you saw just the 11 rushing yards and 14 attempts for the Spartans. This is second and two. Can't take a sack, and Smoker does a nice job to get out of there and get close to the first down. You know, we've talked a lot about Jeff Smoker and overcoming the substance abuse problems that suspended him for the last five games last year. Now he's a senior, and now people are wondering if he's going to be an NFL quarterback. First, you have to answer the physical question of some of his strengths in his game. Uh, his strength as a quarterback is, is his accuracy. And a lot of these guys are getting ready to go to the next level. A lot of them are very accurate. A lot of them make good decisions. But I think Jeff Smoker, more than anything, because of what's happened with him off the field, he's going to have to deal with a lot of the, the big interviews when he goes to Indianapolis to deal with the combine. A lot of the NFL teams, Mike, and you know following the NFL very closely, that you have a, a past with some off the field issues. That is as, probably as big a deal as what kind of football player you are. I'm sure some teams won't even put Smoker on their draft board. This will have a long talk about it beforehand. But uh, his parents, Jay and Sue, have uh, been very supportive and try to continue Jeff's battle. And as anybody who's been around anyone recovering from a substance abuse problem will tell you, it's a daily battle. And the support system will no longer be John L. Smith, but will be Jeff's family and friends outside of the Spartan family, which should be commended for doing beyond and above what was at what should have been asked of them. At the end of the day, earned a lot of respect. Smoker takes a knee because the flag was drawn with the change in the cadence. You know, right away, you want to give the quarterback credit for that, but a lot of times, that's where the offensive line comes back to the huddle and says, hey, Jeff, you know, give, give him a, a two or a three count because these guys are jumping. Outside. They're Defense. jumping the count. Yards, you can see the linemen were as excited about the getting the they call were. there as the quarterback, which indicates to me that they went in there to tell the quarterback, hey, help us out a little bit. These guys are definitely jumping our snap count. One of the key weapons that any offensive football team can use is a non-rhythmic snap count. The reason why you do that, teams with the rhythm start getting that rhythm and take it off on them. A non-rhythmic snap count needs to be used as an offensive weapon. I loved it when I was coaching. It was a nice down for your offensive coordinator. First and five. From the 43, Smoker is sacked. Ryan Bingham, second team, all Big 12. The senior out of Sandy, Utah, sends him into a second and 14. Like I, I just want to say, you, you mentioned it's an interesting play call here. First and five, you're starting to move into Nebraska territory. You're down by two touchdowns. It's way too early to panic and just want to throw the football. And I know Michigan State style is to throw the football, but I'm telling you right now, after three sacks now by Nebraska, they don't respect the running game. They don't have any regard at all for Michigan State and their inability or ability to try at least to run the football. So they're going after Jeff Smoker. It's too early in the game to just purely throw the football and do that alone and try to move the ball down the field. 13th play of the half. 11th pass becomes instead the third run and Smoker twirls forward to the 43. So they've run three times and two of them were Smoker scrambles. So they've really only made the decision to run once in 13 plays here in this third quarter. And if you look at them as a team this year, when they got to the latter part of the season against teams like Michigan, Ohio State, and Wisconsin, even though they beat Penn State, in their last four games, they only averaged 64 yards a game running the football. And I think that, and those are the th three of those games they lost. And they couldn't move the football consistently. And it was, a lot of it had to do with their inability to move, be able to move the ball on the ground. Third and six. In good pressure from Nebraska on third down. This time, there is time for Smoker. Passes late and incomplete. Broken up by Fabian Washington again. Second time he's done that 
here in the third. Fabian Washington, Bullocks, Bullocks, and Ricketts are one of the best sets of defensive backs I've seen for watching the quarterback's eyes. I watched Fabian that time. He was watching Smoker the entire time. He bird dogged that play and jumped the play. That is well coached defensive secondary at Nebraska. Once again, Rayner on to kick. He'll try to rugby punt it if he does kick it. Last one went down to the one. A line drive. Right to Bullocks, and Josh is pulled down at the 13. Jeff Smoker on the phone. Got to find an answer. 45 plays, 122 yards, and Ladies just three and points Please for the Spartans. To the video as we thank all of the sponsors for their Got to enjoy it with family and friends, and our uh, warm wishes for the best in 2004. There is the kicker, Dave Rayner, who is also the place kicker in addition to doing the short punts. He got drilled by Fabian Washington on that last play. Show it to you momentarily. A first down run for Corey Ross takes it out to the 19-yard line. A pickup of about five. It was a close call. Fabian Washington just sized him up. He's looking back to his man uh, Bullocks to see if he's got a chance. You can see his head look at. Now he's just lining him up and boom! Takes the punter down, and that's just yeah. sending a message there, I guess, to Michigan State and the Rainer. I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's great. He, he, hit the, the he hit the killer yeah, punter. I know. Is, you know. I know. I see nothing. Nothing says a lot sometimes. There's Incognito at the end of that run, knocking the quarterback, Roger Maples, down. Those defensive guys, anytime they get a shot on a quarterback or a punter, they're going to take it. And, and the significant good job, the sweetheart, the punter is a guy, he, he, just, he just walks around, goes to class all the time. Right. He's, he, no. Now he's hurt. I want to see him hit a guy, a guy. He's been playing, making, he's hitting guys all night. Yeah, but not, they it's didn't have extra. to hit that A little punter. icing on the Kirk, cake. Kirk, he didn't have to. It, that thing was stopped already, and he hit him. Did, I, I, did I say he should have hit the punter? No. I'm just saying what happened. Oh, okay. Okay. They're trying to stop Nebraska for the third consecutive three and out. It's third and four. Lord has adjusted the play at the line, and here it is. Option, they almost had him. He pitched to Ross, who has the first down at the 25-yard line. Almost reeled in the quarterback, did Matthias Askew, the defensive tackle. Jamal Lord got away long enough to keep it alive and get the first first down of the quarter for Nebraska. Well, this is a big first down for Nebraska just to be able to try to continue to move the thing and pick up their rhythm. Look how close he is to being able to come from behind to take down Jamal Lord. Once he pitched it out to Ross and he got the block from Pilkington downfield, you knew he was going to pick up that first down. Might be time for a Nebraska pass here. Well, we'll keep it on the ground with Ross. He takes it over 80 yards. He now has 20 carries and about 84 yards. Here we go. Uh -huh. Finally. And, and, and you call what's number? Yeah, 51. <laughs> <laughs> you know. yeah, another, another player has lost all his night. head here. You said that the first half. Matthias Askew's helmet is off, and Greg Taplin, yep. whose verbal issue on Friday started the lack of harmonious holiday feel between these teams. <laughs> That's the last call I expected out of that. Holding. You <laughs> sure that was... Yeah. I think there might be. Unless he's going with a face mask because he went after him and I think grabbed it. I think it might be another flag down for another foul. And they may call the hold first and then the other stuff later. If you see the replay on this oh, one. Oh, man. I know. But he's been doing it all game. He is still. They finally got on top of it. Hey, here comes the second foul now. Yes. Oh. Only well, Nebraska. Is, this is good stuff. Uh, only you're going to You're going to get some good, good video here of what's been going on in the entire game in the pit between Nebraska's offensive line and Michigan State's defensive line. Incognito has uh, had a hot temper in the past. Watch 51 red in the middle. Just keep an eye on that whole thing. Whistle blue. Just making sure I'm just going for the pancake, coach. Just a couple blocks here. If you can get a better look of incognito, he comes down on top of Askew. Ooh, watch that hand there. And then Askew grabs his helmet. He's got a hold of his helmet. And I guess that's what they called for the personal foul on Michigan State. <laughs> Meanwhile, the guy's trying to, he's trying to breathe. He's just trying to survive underneath there. Wow. 
Wow. That was not equal justice. No. <laughs> the holding penalty is taken back the 10 yards, then the personal foul. So the ball comes to the 30, and since it was a dead ball personal foul, it's first down. Ross stuck. Hit behind the line and hit hard by Jason Harmon, the junior out of Ironton, Ohio, the leading tackler for the green and one. Well, we mentioned Richie Incognito, who played in that Rose Bowl as a true freshman a few years ago, has been involved throughout the evening with Greg Taplin, losing headgear there. And their battle between the rush end and the left tackle, first team all-conference in Nebraska, has continued after the whistle and with words exchanged throughout. Incognito was involved in a fight in the Penn State game last year and was suspended for a game. Lord looking for Pilkington. Got him! it in at the 46-yard line. That's a first down. Pickup of 19 and another good throw from Jamal Lord. Now, I don't know what they did from the time they played Colorado to this time, but I promise you they practiced their passing game some, Kirk, because this kid is throwing the ball really nice. The line is blocking. Incognito makes a good pass protection. Watch. He comes back. Good football position. Keep his arms out. It's a good. penalty. That's a penalty. He's been going to the face all day on the pass protection. Well, I can't. Believe, I know. I can't believe they haven't called it, but I he's mean, grabbing everything. He's got a hold of the shoulder pads. I could care less who wins this game, but what, what are the officials here for? Gosh! First and ten, here's Ross. Across midfield. We'll have second and five. You guys are 100% right if you don't control the game. But the basic football stuff, you got it. That's the most well, plain thing with the left tackle. There's no place to hide. Lee could tell you, going back, the blocking, pass protection has changed so much, yeah, using the hands. But when you go up and you get face. into the face mask, Autom Automatic yeah, that's, that's exactly. But automatic it's been happening. Penalty. Almost every pass for Nebraska, Incognito is is going after the Michigan State defensive line with his hands. That's the first time uh, you've, we've got a really good look at it, but it's been going on all game. But uh, Jamal Lord is comfortable tonight. You're right. Yeah, it, it, I'm it, he, looks, he looks at right. ease when Whenever he's throwing the football. Doing, he did a nice job in this off. Second and six. Ross has run well, too. Between the tackles, pushes forward. He is very close to the first down. Ronald Stanley, the middle backer. For Michigan State made the play. See, little things like that play action pass there going back to Pilkington on the second and 13, hitting that just opens up the bread and butter of this offense, the power run, the option, and just mixing it in occasionally, trying to catch him off guard on first and 10, on second down. That's going to make it that much easier for Nebraska and this offense to be able to go back to what they want to do. And remember, Nebraska lost to Texas, Missouri, and Kansas State. Two really, really good football teams. The fullback Freewall pinballs his way across the 40 to the 39. And a first down. Only carried 17 times yeah. this year. The junior out of Scotia, Nebraska. Well, Kirk and I were talking yesterday about it. I'm not so sure that right now that Kansas State isn't one of the top two or three teams in the nation. The Buckeyes have got to play them in a bowl game. But they're a hot football team. And they beat this Nebraska football team so they yeah. lost to some good teams. Yeah, they did. And Kansas State, oh. I, I think they caught everybody's attention with their performance against Oklahoma. But and they beat this Nebraska team 38 to 9, yep. which is just remarkable in Lincoln, which yep. is not a very easy thing to do. Out of the gun in the hands of Lord. Almost out to the outside. Almost got a first down as well. Harmon tackles him. Gain of nine. Fastly tumbling inside of two minutes third quarter. Tomorrow, Capital One Bowl League continues on ESPN and ESPN2. College game day presented by Outback, EV1.net, Houston Bowl, Navy, Texas Tech, Pacific Life Holiday Bowl, Washington State, Texas, Silicon Valley Football Classic, UCLA, Fresno State, ESPN, ESPN2, Capital One Bowl Week continues tomorrow. Slate gets bigger on New Year's Eve and continues on through the weekend. A couple of yards there for Ross. That's good enough for the first down. Penalty marker comes in late. The line judge spotted the continued after play. They're going both ways here, perhaps, with personal fouls. Dead ball, personal foul on the offense. Dead ball, personal foul on the defense. They will cancel. The down will be two. 
Oh, if they're dead balls, the down should be one. It's a first down that was achieved, then the dead ball foul, so he should correct that, and he just did. It's a first down for Nebraska. I just like to see the fact that they're, they're trying to take control of this because yes, we keep absolutely. saying that if you miss these opportunities as officials, eventually the players take matters into their own hands as we saw in the Houston and Hawaii game earlier about a, what, a few days ago. Christmas night was a nice Christmas night. Christmas yeah. night. I don't think Michigan State listened to John L. Smith at halftime because they're still doing a hell of a lot more talking than a lot of it. Chirping all the time. Denver, Colorado. Yeah. Corey Ross with a little wiggle Got across the 20. And did a nice job of holding on as Seth Mitchell, knee injury earlier, back in the game, came back and closed him down. But a first down for well, Nebraska. You got to wonder if Corey Ross was healthy and able to play in this offense early in the year, how much that could have helped. Listen, little wiggle. He's, he's got such quickness when he gets out there and they give him enough room. He's get, there's the strength to pull away from the tackle. Now watch him shake this defender. I mean, that, that's, that is a special back in Corey Ross. And remember, he finished the year in a strong note against Kansas, Kansas State, and Colorado, averaging 99 yards in those three games to end the year. Gives his offense a whole different look along with Jamal Lord. Nebraska in the red zone. It is Ross again to the 14 yard line. Jerry Punch. Corey Ross grew up in Denver, Colorado, was a huge Colorado Buffalo fan, and it was a very heated recruiting battle. Why did he come in Nebraska? He told me yesterday, I chose Nebraska because of the eye back. The fact they focus on the eye back, they focus on the quarterback, and they in their run game. It's a plus the fact that I just fell in love with the coaching staff. So that that swayed me to come all the way to Lincoln, even though I lived in Denver, Colorado. So it was important for him to play well when they played their last regular season game against Colorado, and indeed he did. Michael? Had 103 in that game. Another Michigan State personal foul. And the Spartans are losing their cool and could be on their way to losing the game here. He that was, was, I'm sorry, Leo. That was definitely 97 Rathmussen. I mean, he's an all Big Ten academic guy, 3.5 engineering arts, and he hits the guy after the play. I don't know. Maybe he makes yeah. a 3.5 in engineering arts but he's not smart on the football field. This is a bigger issue for John L. Smith right now than tonight's game. He's the first year inheriting a program that had problem with discipline before he got there. Now he needs to start sending a message about next year's team with playing time if guys are going to continue to do this. First in goal from the eight. Up the middle. The Huskers take it inside the five and down to the two with the junior free wall, and that could be the final snap of the third quarter. Nebraska in complete control here. A Michigan State offense, pretty good offense this year. And this spread put up some significant points in a few spots during the year. Average 30 a game. Kill to three. Huskers might bang it in here before the quarter's done. It is Lord to Ross. We'll have third down when the fourth quarter begins. It has been. Nebraska's dominance 362 yards to 122. The old Sparties have three points at 122 yards. Again, physical football intensity, two touchdowns from Ross in the second, all we've had. Off we go to the fourth quarter in the MasterCard Alamo Bowl. Nebraska on its way perhaps to win 10 of the year. Final 15 minutes here in San Antonio, Nebraska. 35 consecutive bowl games. An NCAA record. Looking for a 10-win season. It's third and goal as quarter four begins. Option. Jamal Lord on the center. Fakes it to Ross. He rolls out and is tackled at the nine. Roderick Maples off the corner. Reddick. Kevin Vickerson helped clean up. Nebraska field goal here would make it a three-score game at a 17-point lead. Interesting call there by Barney Cotton with a bootleg without, it was completely a bootleg without any receivers. They were hoping that Michigan State would bite down on the fake to Ross and he could walk to the corner into the end zone, but he had, he had nobody to throw the football to. They were strictly hoping that he could run that football in. Dyke, good from 29. That wasn't a great snap. A good hold. 
They missed the field goal from 26. When you watch that snap, it was behind the holder. The timing thrown off a little bit. Dykes misses from in close. The Spartans dodge a bullet. And now they got to make something happen. A 16-play drive yields nothing. Nothing. Seven minutes off the clock. John L. And team still in it. Got to get it on this drive. Be right back. We're about 5,000 plus came down and bought tickets to support the Spartans. More than 8,000 Nebraska fans. Says everything you need to know about the great Nebraska fans. Coaching change, uh, people uncomfortable there, and uh, still a lot of support. Fans are sending their best wishes to some folks back in East Lansing. They'd love to see the Spartans get on the board. Smoker, a pump, and a much needed deep ball. There's Shabai. Couldn't hook up. That's the one they needed to hit. That's it. Again, Shabai had a step on McPherson, the corner, but couldn't get it done. How many times have we seen the screen? And this time they yeah. decide to go with the screen, and they're going to fake it to try to get the Nebraska defense to bite, which they did. And now he just needs to be able to settle in there, give it a little bit more time, and throw the football with some accuracy downfield. He had him open. Nebraska's defense completely bought up on that screen. Struggle tonight. Just 13 rushing yards. They've only run it 17 times. Second and ten. Alexander brings it in. The six foot five sophomore of Richmond, Virginia, leaves third and about three for a Michigan State offense that scored 30 a game, third in the Big Ten, and has just a first quarter field goal tonight. I get a chance to talk about Aaron Alexander Good. on that one with his hands. Now watch this. Remember. John L. Smith said he's the only guy on the football team I got that reaches out and catches with his hands. Oh, nice. Former quarterback. He's going to be a terrific receiver, and he, as he's only a sophomore, and he's from Richmond, Virginia. When did it happen? At what point in, in football did it happen where you're down by 14, you make an eight-yard catch, and you talk trash after you make the catch? When did that come into play? Was that, was that the 80s or Third and a couple, Smoker, and coverage, Alexander couldn't reel it in, and that's a three and out again for Michigan State. Nine first downs tonight, two via penalty. I'd like to tell you where I think it came from, the National Football League and television. That's exactly where I think it, the, the National Football yeah. League, a guy gets a sack, makes one tackle, and drrr, does all kinds of dancing. That's where these guys learn it. Yeah. That's where they learn it. It's just painful to watch. Oh, it is. Watching Tim Duncan. Mike, uh, he's got more connections than anybody in America. And he gets us. <laughs> we go to the Spurs game and we're watching. Tim Duncan. Here is arguably, Mike, the best player. Is he the best player in the NBA? Most complete. Best and player. here he is, just fundamentally sound. Yeah. He's hustling. He's a teammate. He's a leader. Just you wish more guys were that kind of, that kind of player. Brandon Fields' kick goes out of bounds at the 36. Sparties have had five three and outs tonight. They're in some trouble. Down 14. Lord on the field next. You know, it, Lee, maybe we made a mistake yeah. this year. Next year for Christmas, I know what we need to get Herbie. Oh, that's, that's right there. Little, Little Red. Red. This is his favorite mascot favorite in the country. Mascot. Right? Favorite mascot in the country. <laughs> Look at that. I don't know who won the contest, but he, he should be up there. Isn't that Capital One contest, halftime of the Capital One Bowl? I think it is. Yeah, on ABC on New Year's Day. That's my vote right there. That's <laughs> good stuff. Best is when he walks out for the coin toss with the team. Uh, where, where will my laughs come the next six months, I wonder? Jamal Lord, first down carry to Ross. He's getting close to 100 yards here on the night and takes it out to the 37-yard line. You know, we talk about players and what coaches mean to them. I think Frank Solich meant a lot to the Nebraska football players because of the great tradition and lineage in this program from Devaney to Osborne then to Solich a lifer as a Husker 24 years part of the program. And the players were unhappy with what happened to Frank Solich but it says a lot of how they reacted for Bo Pelini here tonight as the interim head coach and he said he ain't running the offense it's Barney Cotton show. Bo's not even up the line of at the uh, sideline here as Ross runs across the 45 and out towards midfield. You have to give a lot of credit to all of these assistant coaches who one coach shy had to pick up all the slack work very hard to keep the focus of the players and Barney Cotton the offensive coordinator told me a couple of weeks ago when Frank Solich put this staff together of five new assistants, 
did a great job. He brought together really good people, and the good people have done a very good job for the kids at Nebraska football here in this bowl game. What a relief for, we talked a lot about Bo Pelini and Barney, Barney Cotton, but how about the assistants and Lee said the oh, families. families. You just saw one of the coaches kind of waving it, waving to his wife yeah. and, and loved ones down there because this has been a stressful time for them as well. And they, who knows what tomorrow's going to bring. I mean, we have no idea what's going to happen. This is an outstanding performance by Bo Pelini and by this Nebraska team after all the stress that they've had to deal with and all the, the distractions that they've had to deal with. But, you know, we can sit here and say, is it enough? Is Steve Peterson already made his mind up about Bo Pelini and whether or not he's the right guy to have an opportunity you to know, be the head coach? an interesting thing happened in Michigan State, if you remember. They had a coach named Bobby Williams, an assistant football coach, that right. won the Citrus Bowl. That's right. They carried him off the field, and they named him the head football coach. I doubt if that will happen because it's a different set of circumstances. Second and four. Ross over 100 yards here on the night is very close to a first down as they check the mark. We asked Bo Pelini yesterday if he thought in any way this was a one-day audition for the permanent head coaching job. I don't have to prove anything to anybody. And uh, I know I, I know I can do this job and uh, a tremendous amount of confidence in, in my abilities. And, and, uh, and I've been auditioning for 10 years now and over in, here in Nebraska for the last 11 months. And uh, the results is, you know, speak for themselves. Ross here with a first down over the 40 into the 37. In some ways, the results on defense speak for themselves. The, the 130 yards on 48 plays for Michigan State here tonight. But uh, it also says a lot that the offensive players we talked to. I said, if I if if I don't give your name, give me an honest answer. Would you want Bo Pelini as a head coach? I asked five offensive player five offensive players said absolutely yeah and I and I think that the thing that stood out to me in hearing Bo and that soundbite is that he said I don't have to prove anything to anybody the last 10 years speak for themselves the proofs in the pudding I don't think that's the question about Bo I don't think it's his credentials or whether or not he's qualified to be the head coach I, th I don't think if he ends up not getting the job it won't be because of his credentials or whether or not he's qualified to be the guy it'll be because Number one, he doesn't have head coaching experience, and he's not that guy that maybe, as we said, is going to be that wow factor when you walk in and say, hey, here's your next head coach, and you drop a name, and you walk to the podium, and everybody just stands there like, wow, I can't believe this is the head coach in Nebraska. And I think with Steve Peterson, you have to believe that, that that might be the situation because of firing the coach who won nine games this past season. Ross has carried the last six times. Make it seven in a row. This one was a fumble. It's a good thing he fell on it, or else he would have had a problem with the rush coming in from Vickerson. Ross tonight, 33 carries. He's going to dive back under 125 yards with the lost yardage on that fumble, perhaps. Depends how they're credited, but still at a career high. And tank a wee bit empty right now. Reminds me a lot of, of a Darren Sproles type with Kansas State, who runs the option with L. Roberson and, and Darren Sproles. Love to have seen Corey Ross healthy all year and, and the starting tailback for this team. Josh Davis now comes in to replace him at I back. Jamal Lord to throw here on third down. Deep down the middle to Fuller, and he couldn't haul it in. I bet you on the replay that goes right through his hands. It looked like it did. That was an absolutely. I bet, you, right. I bet you're watching it live. It went right through his hands too. <laughs> but I'm saying, watch it. It goes right through his hands. Watch. I say nothing. That was a perfect pass by a guy that can't throw. <laughs> well, supposedly. I mean, well, like, tonight he tonight he's, I mean, he's, he's proven some people wrong tonight. Wow. He looks good. It's good for him too. Yep. Oh yeah. Guy who uh, took a lot. Man, uh, live has he taken a lot of heat. Mm -hmm. See if Michigan State can get after Kyle Larson's punt here on fourth and 14. Good job of protection. Shabai calls a fair catch and makes it at the 11. Not done yet, but time running out. Next two minutes as you watch these important messages, Kirk will share his passion for Little Red. <laughs> here in the Alamo Dome, which you can walk to from the Riverwalk area. And the teams have enjoyed that. And we've enjoyed staying down by the Riverwalk. Second time I've done this bowl, first chance to stay down at the Riverwalk. It's been very enjoyable.
Good heat. Except, except for the Spartan fans. They have not uh, enjoyed the week. Haven't enjoyed the uh, game thus far. 9-19 left. Running out of opportunities to make something happen. Again, Shabai with the catch. He stays in bounds. It's a first down out to the 23-yard line. First time tonight. Nebraska has not made a tackle with the first chance out on the perimeter with their secondary and Shabai made a pay for it there picking up the first down. Well, let me give you an interesting stat. That's the first completion for more than 10 yards since early in the second quarter for Jeff Smoker. Yeah. That's exactly what you're talking about. Let him catch it in front. Tackle him. They missed him that time. They just got to miss him so he can go 90 yards and get this thing close. <laughs> No, it just can't just stand in. One play. In the 24. Smoker throws to Alexander. It's complete for eight yards to the 32. All sophomore receivers, and they're going to need to step up and improve as this spread offense goes on for whoever replaces Jeff Smoker next year. If you weren't with us in the first quarter, Drew Stanton, the redshirt freshman who is the backup quarterback, personal protector on punts, injured his knee, and they're going to have to look at it. Didn't look very good, Jerry told us when it happened. Second and two. Hey, right. hey come. Terrell Dorch. Out of bounds at the 40. As said, Michigan State's still very much in this. Exactly. If they can get a score on this drive, stop Nebraska, and have the ball in your hands with a chance to tie or win the game. I like Dave Baldwin and uh, J.L. Smith's, John L. Smith's situation here where they're going with the no huddle because they got to do something to get that Nebraska team out of rhythm defensively. Wow, they're good defense. And, and tempo is such a yeah, big part of this offense. When, when this offense was running as a well-oiled machine a couple years ago in Louisville with Dave Ragone, it was all about getting first downs, getting in and out of the huddle, having a tempo. It is he threw, but the pass is complete to Zeal Cavanaugh. First catch from the senior from Quebec. There are a couple of players from uh, north of the border on the rush. Although, if you are in Detroit, technically you go south to get to Canada. If you go through the Windsor Tunnel or over the Ambassador Bridge. In any case, Cavanaugh has uh, helped fight the language barrier as a French speaking uh, resident of Quebec by watching TV to help learn English during his time. Now he's a senior, age 26. Eight yard completion there, second and two. Back to the run with Jaron Hayes. Right at the first down line, seven and a half to go in the fourth. Really surprised by how the Michigan State offensive line has gotten whipped consistently by Nebraska's front four, and especially in the pass pro situation where Nebraska all year long, they were we talked about Bo Pelini and his scheme and his own blitz pressure, and tonight they've shied away from that a little bit because Michigan State with Smoker out of the shotgun believes in a lot of screens and throwing the ball underneath and getting rid of it quickly, so they decided to rush four. I really thought they'd struggle getting pressure on Smoker without the blitz because the defensive line hasn't done anything all year in that regard, but they have really dominated Michigan State and just had more athletic ability and more speed. A couple of chains shy, or chain link shy of the first down. You know the guys in that offensive line, Joe Tate, 68, one of the offensive linemen mentioned earlier, uh, leads the team in Bible study, started 22 games, senior out of the Detroit suburb of Southfield, Michigan. He has uh, become Jeff Smoker's roommate. Tate is a guy who stays in at night. Is the straightest arrow on this team. Put him around Jeff to be the best possible influence for him. Also in that line, 57, Paul Harker, 60-year senior. He's the guy who collapsed and fainted on the sideline during the Notre Dame game a few years ago. A couple of knee injuries. When he met John L. Smith, the infectious enthusiasm of John L. caused Harker to look into maybe getting a sixth year from the NCAA. And one of the good things the NCAA does, they gave him a sixth year of eligibility. And Harker is back playing football. This is a fumble as that beanbag came in smoker losing it on the exchange with third and about three inches to go you see who comes away with the ball the huskers take the ball out of the pile i don't think any official has an idea whose ball whose ball it is smoker was down for about 45 seconds and demario williams finally got it out of there <laughs> And pulled it up out of the bottom of the pile. You're gonna have a hard of it. He threw the beanbag right away, which means he saw the ball free before yeah, the, the play was dead, and it was. Ball came out, yeah, but uh, Smoker recovered it, and then Demario Williams comes in to the left and just yeah. starts ripping and going to going to work on it. Yeah. 
And that center, Chris Morris, is an all Big Ten academic 3.2 in finance. Didn't get the snap up that time well enough, but call timeout. They have to because it's fourth down. His knee was down as you saw. Great replay, yeah. guys. Our uh, director, Mike Schwab, producer, Tom Archer, and our entire crew getting a terrific look there. And you saw they were short. So they've got to make sure they do the right thing here on fourth down. And Bo Pelini wants to know what's going on from the referees. And we got the football. Nebraska thought it was their ball. That's Bo right there. Now he threw a flag. Bo's fiery nature getting after the official there for not making a call. And the line judge threw a flag, and that'll give him a first down for Michigan State. And you talk about playing in control, you have to obviously yeah. be in control as a coach as well. On sportsmanlike conduct on the defense, 15 yards, first down. when you talk about Lee what you have always told us you are going to make mistakes as your first time as a head coach exactly and when you're on a stage like Nebraska that's stuff that won't sit very well but now you watch those kids they're fired up to get the back of the guy who they like a lot it's be a very interesting few minutes to watch yeah, I don't know both needs to learn to be able to control himself in those kind of situations Watch Bobby Knight or some of these coaches that purposely come up with something. I'm not saying he did that here because that was fourth down. But you ever see a coach that purposely yeah. does that and then all of a sudden they try to get his team to respond? No, not there. Uh, not, not there, no. It was fourth, fourth down. down. Fourth down. But I'm just saying. Not when you got interim yeah. on your name. That's fourth right. game ever as a first game ever as a head coach at any level. So it's a first down. Smokers throw to Alexander. He's caught. He spins away at the 30. Kept this play going. And he's down to the 26 yard line. Do you realize that it's 17 to 3 with 6 minutes and 50 seconds ago and it seems like it's 46 to nothing? It does have that feel. It does. It does. If they, Mike, you brought up before, if they get a touchdown here and a stop, people don't go away. No, I never go away. It was going away. It's the week between Christmas and New Year. No work is done. Just in case they were starting to go away. No, settle in. Bo kept them in there. <laughs> The coming up next. Spartans have been scoreless on their last eight possessions. Smoker puts it in the belly of Dortch. Tyrell Dortch powers forward to the 20-yard line. There's the pushing after the play with Parker and Lakeven Smith continuing. And one of the best things that's happened, if you notice, the no huddle offense has got more juice in state. More juice because they're forced to tempo. So you mentioned the word tempo. It's a perfect example of yep. it right here. That 15 yard penalty really helped them. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a. That's but a, they had moved a long that, way. Yeah, sure that. have. That's a rookie mistake, is what it is. Yeah. You know? And I think a more respected guy wouldn't get the flag, but wouldn't have pushed that far. Yeah. He really went after it. Yeah. Drive start at their own 12. Smokers throw again. It is Aaron Alexander wrapped up and pushed down with feeling, and a flag comes in. Dorch and Hollowell were involved as Ricketts and Rude were making the tackle. What is it, five? Personal fouls. Five personal fouls. Yeah. For, all, for all you players that are going to be playing in the next four to five, six days, can you pay, can you watch this game tonight and see what an embarrassment this is? Personal foul on the offense. Yeah. 15 yards. See, spotted the foul. I love the emotion. We all love the emotion of college football. But you play smart. You're trying to. You're down by two touchdowns. You're trying to get back in the game. And you're gonna you're gonna come in and, and do something to cost cost your team 15 yards. It's 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 right at the end of the play as the receiver Alexander is trying to fight for extra yards. Watch to the right of the screen. 34. Right there, a little hit. I think there was an, even a little more off to the right. There was more than that. He yeah. looked. He hadn't thrown the flag yet. Yep. That was okay. Yep. Because that play was still going on. To the right. The flag makes it second at about 22. Smoker loading up. It's a dangerous throw. It's intercepted. Pat Ricketts. Defense had the back of their coach. Uh. 
And they get the ball back. Now you've got three sophomores and a senior, Pat Ricketts, who was picked on unmercifully last year, and this year has had a sensational year. He sits at home and shows incredible discipline. Top of the screen, at first he commits, but watch him stay at home as the quarterback rolls away, head on a swivel, looking around to find a receiver, and sits right in front of Alexander as the ball is thrown and steps and makes the play. All right, let me give you this stat. Two or more interceptions now in 10 straight games. Unbelievable. And all of you who filled up those internet chat boards and made Ricketts the whipping boy, a walk-on who replaced a very good corner in Dewan Gross, get on those chat rooms tonight and give the kid praise. Run by Ross there. A four-year player with a who has graduated, one of the 19 Cornhuskers to graduate, a GPA of 3-5 in business administration. Nebraska's defense gets black shirts. It, it's a tradition that started when they needed to tell the offense or the defense back in the Devaney days. And, and they say, oh, here, we'll, give the, we'll, go, we'll get some black shirts so we can tell the difference between them. Well, the black shirt is the nickname of this defense. You hear it referred to all the time. When this kid got his black shirt last year, he framed it. It stays oh, in a man. frame. That's what it means to him forever. He'll never play another football game after tonight. And these are the guys upon which Nebraska's great football tradition has been built. And he comes up with what could be the play to close the deal tonight. Ross spinning, staying alive, showing great moves across the 40 and to the 42. Ross approaching 140 yards here tonight. 35 carries for a buck 38. They want you off the bench. Ross has really played well, but this the defense throughout the entire season for Nebraska has come up with the big plays. Lee, you talked about the turnovers. and I don't yep. know how many times, how many weeks we've talked about Bo Pelini's scheme and how different it was from what they ran a year ago. But you could go down the entire list of the 11 starters and the 14 or 15 guys that participate on a regular basis and talk about how this new scheme has helped them all in so many different ways. They talked about it's actually a simpler defense, even though it's more confusing for the offense. It's simpler for the defense to learn and to be able to come up with the plays. But it's been all night tonight. The defensive backs have done a nice job of coming up with tackles. They've also done a nice job of baiting Jeff Smoker, coming up with deflection after deflection. They've had some interception opportunities. Lee talked about now they lead the nation with 31. That's the last one with Ricketts. Nice job with the scheme and a great job with this defensive backfield as a group. Those 31 interceptions now set the school record most ever intercepted in the yes. year. And he used to have 30 as the record in 1971. But the most impressive thing about that is two or more interceptions in 10 straight games. I've never heard that before. Second and 12. Here is Ross. Got back to where uh, this series of drives started. Before third and 10, here's Jerry. Guys, aside from football, Corey Ross's primary passion is bowling. Yes, I said bowling. He carries a 190 average, and he's bowled a game at 232. He said he never bowled before he came to Lincoln, Nebraska. In a local bowling alley, he started what they call Bikini Wednesday. Every Wednesday, the girls could come bowl for free if they wore a bikini. Thus, his love of bowling was born. But he tells me he even goes on non-bikini nights, and he's averaged now over 190, pushing 200. <laughs> the love of bowling, huh? You wonder how it starts. Time out here with 314 uh, remaining. And as our season wraps up, bowling is one of the things our crew loves to do. That's right. We Who's just want to take a second to uh, say goodbye to our leader, Tom Archer, yep. our uh, producer who's worked for so many years on the College Football Project on ESPN. He's, he's moving to the big leagues. He's going to work yep, Sunday Night leagues. Baseball with John and Joe. Yeah, he, the three of us have uh, sent him off the deep end. He'll get John and Joe and the Hall of Famer in there. But, uh, Tom, on behalf of all the crew, thank you. We've had uh, three wonderful years with you on Thursdays, your Big Ten, your studio coverage. Uh, one of the great guys. And uh, we'll see you around the building, but thanks for some great times. If I'm not mistaken, Tim Corrigan before him now is the vice president in charge of he's everything. He's not a vice president. Well, whatever. He does everything. He's he he, he, he Every time a guy covered. spends time with us, they, they go us. right up to the top. And we stay here. And where are we? We stay here. We, Hattiesburg. Berg, Blacksburg. You know, we love that. <laughs> that's, our, that's, that's, the best. that's our thing. It's the best. And Fort our, Collins. And our entire crew as well. Ish and Steve <laughs> and all the guys. Thank you very much, everyone. It's uh, We say that. You hear people say that on TV all the time. But uh, this is our football family away from home three days a week. <laughs> the yaw man. It's a scary way to go to break, but we'll be right back. 3.14 left, fourth quarter, Nebraska by 14.
Tonight on SportsCenter, Black Monday for NFL coaches. How this coach escaped while this one awaits. No touchdowns allowed by the Nebraska defense. 17-3, final 3-14. As we move towards SportsCenter here on ESPN, remember Capital One Bowl Week continuing with three more games tomorrow on the networks. Third and ten. A ground ball back to Lord, who scoops it up. Holding flag comes in as Lord gets back to the line of scrimmage. Flag thrown right there in the middle. If it is holding, which you would expect the flag from the umpire thrown in there, mm -hmm. decline it, be fourth and ten, and try to block the punt. Holding on the offense, decline, the down is four. You know, Michigan State, eight and four this year. I think surprised everybody in the Big Ten Conference, even their own fans. Absolutely. Got to wonder if they're going to be able to uh, to come back without Jeff Smoker and have a chance to get to eight wins next year. Talking to John L. Smith, he said the emphasis is, is pretty clear. They need receivers. They need secondary people. Uh, and the big thing is they need numbers. You know, he's going to probably go out and get 28 to 30 guys this year in the recruiting season. Mm -hmm. He's already has maybe 18, 18 verbal yeah. commitments. And give him some time. It may not, it may not get to eight wins again next year, but give him some time, and he will have this football team play with a lot of passion, and hopefully with a lot more discipline in the coming years. Ball go out of bounds at the 21, 238. Last chance coming for Jeff Smoker in Michigan State. Held without a touchdown tonight. State bowl game, their record 7-9. They've been shut out twice. 96 Sun Bowl, Stanford. 38 Orange Bowl, Auburn. Remember that game, Lee? 38 Orange Bowl? No. no. <laughs> From the 22, first and 10, Michigan State has an opening quarter field goal, and that's it. Still trying to add here. Another helmet has come off as Smoker is taken down. Back at the 15-yard line. That was a Fowler comment. 38. Let's go down to Jerry. Guys, one of the real feel-good stories involving tonight's Alamo Bowl involves a grassroots group of Michigan State alums and fans who raised over $20,000 in the span of two weeks to send a group of 475 children here from the San Antonio Boys and Girls Club. You know, in a holiday season where we're supposed to remember those less fortunate, a group of Spartan fans did that here tonight. Started out on an internet chat board. One of the few good ideas hatched in the internet chat board. Smoker is brought down may have taken the worst of that as he threw it away. Patrick Cabongo, another player from Montreal, Quebec. Cabongo learned English by watching The Price is Right on TV. And one of his first words was spayed and neutered. In any case, third and 16 coming up. Talk about Michigan State. There's one more thing about John L. Smith. One of the best things I've heard about in years. You know, Michigan State last year got beat by Penn State 61 to 7. And this year they beat them 41 to 10. That's an 85 point turnaround in one year. That might be the most I've ever heard of one team doing that, Mike. 85 point difference. I don't know what Cumberland did with the next time they saw Georgia Tech after 222 to nothing. <laughs> I think they, they didn't play him again. Oh. <laughs> End of the season. Williams off the corner. Got Smoker. Got a sack. Two sacks and a forced incompletion. If you didn't see the game, you saw it right there. Michigan State had no answer for Nebraska's defense here tonight. And again, this is typically DeMar Williams' spot when it's third and long, but he has played the defensive end position all night against his pass-oriented team in Michigan State. And Mike, you're right. This has kind of been, in a nutshell, the speed, the athletic ability of Demario Williams and the rest of the front four from Nebraska. That's been the difference. Getting pressure with four, not having to always blitz to come up with the pressure. Demario Williams looking good at that defensive end spot on the right side. Obviously have to go for it. Could be the final play for Jeff Smoker in a Spartan uniform. It is an interception brought down by Fabian Washington. And it's a shame to see Jeff Smoker's Michigan State career end on a note like this because Jeff has been one of the great stories of this football season. His return 
from very difficult off the field problems but a tough night on the football field for Jeff and his parents as Nebraska's defense has played very hard for their interim head coach and their coordinator in his first game ever as a head coach good for him Bo Pelini got the job done here tonight I'll give you a final line on Nebraska guys Michigan State ran 62 plays 174 yards sacked five times three Nebraska interceptions we remind you that Sports Center is coming up next NFL coaches knocked down today Jason's journey is Jason White the Heisman winner and 22 NBA and NHL highlights in one Gatorade dump and since it's the MasterCard Alamo Bowl for uh, Bo Pelini the defensive coordinator Who's about to get it? I think the word priceless would describe this moment coming up. Hiding, 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 seeking. Got him. Got them both. <laughs> it's three weeks of just relief, just to let it all out for this entire team, entire coaching staff. Stressful times. Nobody here may get the job. Who knows if Turner, yeah. Gill, or Bo Pelini get full interviews? Who knows if any of these guys are here? But they put a very proud line on their resume by how they handled this situation here tonight. Nebraska wins a bowl game again. What else is new? 17 to 3. Jeff Smoker, valiant in his effort for Michigan State. Corey Ross, a career high 138 rushing yards, two touchdowns, the only two of the game. They are our Capital One players of the game. No points scored in the second half. Nebraska, without a permanent head coach, wins it 17-3, a 10-win season for the Cornhuskers. Michigan State ends its season 8-5. Doc, Kirk, Lee. Join it. Best 14 weeks of the year, man. Hey, wonderful. Man. Kill him in the NBA. Josh Kill him in the NBA. We'll be watching. And Marty and Melinda and everybody in our booth. And thank you for watching all year. Continue to enjoy Capital One Bowl Week. Sports Center's next. We'll see you one more time on ESPN, ESPN News. Thank you for watching this presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Nebraska wins the MasterCard Alamo Bowl 17-3. We say good night from San Antonio. And off we go to Sports Center.